Hello. Alright, let's get the music, alright? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, the other room is working as well. Um, interestingly, the suggestions room keeps the history as well, so... And I can always look back through that. A lot easier than I can the main room. Okay, so, right, we're going to look at Barbarian. Um, so I did a little bit of digging around in it beforehand because I wanted to make sure I could get get it working. Let me say hello to everyone as well. So who we got here? I've got Dr. Miz, hi. I've got Amok, hi. Andy. Steps. Holt as well. Cool. Welcome, guys. So I've been a bit um, scared of this stream because uh, looking into Barbarian uh, on my lunch hour today it seemed really difficult to get a clean version of it so what I ended up doing was uh, taking a snapshot in Vice and loading it into uh, let's show this simple trailer actually so this is the tool I think Stoker mentioned it's probably quite hard to see I can't make it much bigger unfortunately um, but it lets you load a vice snapshot in, so if I load the snapshot I had, this one, um, you can then see the disassembly of it as well, which is nice. Um, I used this disassembly to find the entry point, because I couldn't unpack it like normal. Uh, so normally I would unpack uh, the file. Ah, welcome to the stream, Stoker. Um, normally I would unpack the file with the tool that I wrote. Uh, to unpack but it struggled with this one and I think it's because um, of where it's storing things it stores things over the basic RAM area um, over the over the uh, yeah the basic RAM area the 0801 onwards um, but what this tool is really good at doing um, is showing you go into multicolor and pick the right areas of RAM showing you where the bitmaps live. Uh, at first I thought this this kind of garbled mess was just because of the way the colours were being stored in the snapshot. Yeah, so, if, well, let me show you what happens, actually, steps. If I load in uh, the, the, the original PRG that I had, uh, so this was the PRG that I had first. Um, I'm going to have to load it through this. it until I, I have to reload the program. And this is this is why I want to unpack things before I, I use them um, patching because otherwise what you get is just the compiled code and if you look at the bitmaps in here um, no matter where so it doesn't really matter where I pick as my, my colour but let's pick the normal location. You can see it's all just garbage. And that's because it's just compressed data, so so that's kind of useless. Yeah, no problem. How's that? I'm on water tonight as well. Nice and simple. Yeah, so so obviously the the, the compressed files are no good. So I I found the easiest way to get it is to unpack it myself um, but I was having problems unpacking it using my normal methods um, so I had to try and find a way to create these PRGs that I've got here um, and the way I did it was I, I loaded in let me restart this it seems to need restarting every time you load a new file uh, I loaded in my snapshot um, it should be on my desktop oh, I've done PRG that's why my snapshot. So once I had my snapshot, I confirmed that it was correct by looking for the bitmaps. I knew where they were because I've done some investigation beforehand. Um, and they're there. Uh, and then I can save out. So you can use this to save out a PRG. I just saved out from 0801, which is the basic area onwards, um, up to FF. FC0 and set an entry point of 01. Oops. And then when you export, 
Um, it'll create a PRG that you can then you can then use. Oh, thanks for the bit, pseudo pseudo mod probe. Welcome to the stream. I don't think I've seen you before, so welcome if you've just just joined for the first time. So yeah, we're we're looking into Barbarian. I'm just explaining how I created the clean file. Um, yeah. So I, I realised that this looked incorrect. Um, so let me let me just show you what I mean. Um, if I if I actually export that as a PRG, let's call it test.prg, and then open up Vice. Uh, so it doesn't put the, this was the first thing is it didn't have a basic entry point so it was obviously using something in the DPAC routine to jump directly to a location now I did some investigation I'll show you how I found this address in a minute um, uh, but it's, it's basically that address but you can see the colors are wrong let me turn the sound off on that so this got me thinking why why are the colors wrong um, I actually thought it was corrupted at first. I thought the bitmap was corrupted, but I realized it's probably just the colors. So what I did, just to see if it was the colors, if you go into the vice monitor and use the fill command, which is F, and then just fill the color RAM uh, with a value, and then restart. You can see indeed it kind of changes the colors all over the screen. So then I thought about it a little bit more, and what I realized is when you save a snapshot, the memory that's under D000 to DFFFF, so the IO area, is not being saved in that snapshot. So what you can do instead though, is you can, if I just restart my original snapshot, uh, snapshot image, and start that again. So this is the correct colors. So what I did is I go into into the monitor and I save out those color rams areas. So I'm going to save the entire area. Uh, well, actually, I'll just save the I'll just save the color ram bit for now. Um, but I'll explain why I had to do the whole lot and as well in a minute. Um, so you can save an area out by uh, just doing that. Okay, so now that's there saved as as color ram. So now if I load my test PRG in again. And, and run the location. I've got incorrect colors. But then if I go into here and load color RAM. And restart, it fixes the colors. So I realized that I had to actually save out those, those separately. So what I've got in here. Uh, is two color RAM files, one for the first version of the game with the first set of backgrounds and one for the second set of uh, one for the second set of uh, backgrounds <laughs> oh, it does remind me actually I need to try this out I did apply for some new emojis I don't know if they're there actually there let me try. Oh, no, it's not been approved yet. Shame. I've got a little wine emoji and then I've got an emoji of me with my uh, eye, my my uh, right eye shut. That was, uh, I thought that was a kind of interesting one to put in there. Um, yeah, so, so the color RAM isn't being saved out with a snapshot, so I have to re-import that. Now, the other thing is, is when the maps are redrawn, so you'll see now that, that flicker there, it goes black and then redraws it. Some of that map data seems to also be stored in this area. In fact, you can see it there. If I go in into the infiltrate, you can see this bit here. That's, I mean, it still looks like garbage, but you can see it's, it's kind of slightly less random than this. And it's because it is actually um, some map data as well. So when I saved it out, I had to save actually from um, from D00 to DFFF. So let me show you how I wrote the code to do this. So once I had the, the snapshot, so this test PRG is, is just this file here, this barb, uh, 
part one and part two. There's a different one for each uh, version of the of the background. Delete those files. Um, and so what I've got in here, um, I define whether it's version one or version two. Um, and then depending on that, it will either load in as the base file, part two or part one. And then I import, depending on the version, into D00, part two and part one. But even doing that isn't enough, because if I just do that, I'll still be in, I'll still run into the same problem in that these are copied into RAM underneath the IO area. So what I needed to do is in the entry point was create a routine which would then toggle uh, the processor port in uh, zero page address one uh, between 30 and, and 37 in hex to turn the IO RAM on and off um, and copy from underneath the IO area to inside the IO area. Um, and that's what this, this loop does. It goes through from D0 to, or all the way up to E000 uh, and copies copies that RAM um, and then jumps to the entry point. So let me let me show you how I found the entry point. So this problem is it's going to be quite hard to see in this this disassembler, but um, let's give it a shot anyway. I'm going to show you in the debugger as well. Probably a bit easier. How big can I make this? Problem is, it doesn't change the size of the text, so that's quite hard to see. So let's no, I will. I'll show you in here, and then I'll show you in the debugger. So the reason why this is a really good disassembler um, is, first of all, it shows you in this this green pattern here shows you where it thinks actual code is. So this it thinks is just data. This it thinks is code. So you can straight away see probably where you need to start looking and then these arrows show you where the jumps are coming from um, so you can kind of scroll through and you can see various locations so what I did was I looked for uh, the first piece of code that started after the data and it was here at this location here um, and there's even a, a jump ad address here that's being called from there so I just tried that as my entry address in here, and it worked. Um, no, I haven't tried the cutter disassembler. To be honest, the only disassembler I'd used um, until Infiltrator was the debugger. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe I do need to look at more of these tools because this is this one has definitely been very useful for for kind of figuring out where the entry point for this um, for this game was. Uh, and I don't think I'd have been able to do it without that, so... Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, so the cutter disassembler, is that is that more recent? Um, maybe we can... maybe I'll get that for next time and have a look. Uh, Agrafin, thanks Shalon for the Airwolf training version, I was able to rescue one guy. I couldn't... I still couldn't rescue anybody in it, but then my, my coordination is kind of terrible, so... Okay, there's a link, GitHub link here, so let's just have a quick look. Um, let's try and make that a bit bigger so you guys can see it. Oops. Oh, okay, so it handles everything. Yeah, uh, ah, that's interesting because I've had to do. I was doing some security stuff today. Uh, I found a potential um, uh, 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 kind of, I don't know what you would call it actually, I guess it's kind of a, a buffer allocation overflow um, that potentially could expose executable uh, memory. Um, this would have been very useful for that. So I, I may actually look, look into it. I'm going to drag this actually into my bar so I remember to actually look at it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this looks similar. It's got the arrows pointing to the various places. It looks like it's got a nice kind of function graph as well, which is pretty useful. And this handles 6502 as well, does it? I guess it does. Ah, oh, thank you for the sub, Hamrath, and welcome to the stream. It does handle 6502. Okay, that's cool. 
Uh, I guess if it handles lots of varieties, that would be kind of useful. Because I also do at some point need to go through the PC Engine source code for Power Soul Stars, so that could help me out quite a lot. So uh, I made my own symbolic dissimilar to understand how Apple II GS execute works. So there's a lot of guesswork. Do you know where to work? Uh, okay, yeah, I shall. I can note that one as well. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Gave my sub for my mum's HP now shorter. Well, it's very much appreciated, Hamra. Thank you very much. Let's make a note of that one as well. Cool. Thanks guys, I shall I shall have a look at those um those at some point. Um so let me show you what happens when I build this. Now for some reason this is is, is no longer automatically launching vice. I don't know why it's well it's launching vice but it's no longer automatically launching the file. I don't know why that's happening. Um but it's fine, it just means I, I need to go into the, the folder and uh and manually do it. Which is relatively easy, I'll just keep it open here. And there you go. So this is loading it, loading it in, uh, loading in our color RAM files, and then copying them into location. So if I was to take this, this out, um, this piece of code out. Whoops. I don't know what I've done there, but uh, 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 hi, Epic Ni Neon Ninja Monkey. I'm glad you like it. I'm working on a bot at the moment um, that I'm hoping to have ready for the next stream that will allow you guys to um, play with the Sid music in the background. You'll be able to vote um, on Sid tracks you want to hear and um, and queue them up. You'll get like two two tunes you can add to the queue at a time. Um, you know, you'll be able to randomise by artist or or year. Um, so yeah, it should be quite interesting. So I just commented that section out. So this is the section that's copying from underneath uh, IO uh, ROM, or well, IO RAM into uh, from the RAM under IO RAM um, into into actual IO RAM. So if I comment that out, you'll see that the colors get messed up again. Um, again, I don't know why it's not automatically starting. It automatically starts on my other patch games, but just not on this one for some reason. And you see how it's see how its colors messed up there. So I've learned something today. I've learned I've learned that if you take snapshots and you try and export um, you try and export PRG from a disassembler, you're only ever going to see the I/O area. You're not going to see the stuff underneath. But you can save out the, the RAM underneath using using Vice. Um, so all I did with this, I just found a, an area with some code, uh, uh, some free space, uh, and dropped that in. So let me let me drop our version into into the disassembler into the debugger um, oops, you can see here where this is the is that the code that should be the code oh I need to, I need to rebuild that's why yep. Oh, this debugger can be a pain sometimes. I wonder if the game can look better with a rework of the graphics. You mean you mean this in Barbarian? That's exactly what we're going to do tonight. So once I once I show you this running, um, I'm going to show you how we can we can change the graph. Well, we're going to try and figure out together how we can change the graphics. I don't actually know exactly where the graphics live so we'll we'll have to have a play around with it a little bit um i have learned a few things about it which i'll share with you um but yeah we can we can have a look so you can see here this is this is where i found was, there was blank space that i could do some stuff with um so so this here is is this code i had to move it down one line so that you can still got room to type run but there you go it's it's working so before we go into um into changing the graphics um i'm just going to quickly show you 
how this game is working because um, it's it's really quite interesting um, and I'll use the other debugger for this as well because it's it's quite easy to see some of the stuff that's going on <coughs> sorry excuse me a really dry mouth today I don't know what's wrong with me and welcome to the stream Dom I didn't notice you appear Um, okay, so let's start with the the Vic area, and I thought that was the correct way. Oh, there we go. So the first thing you'll notice is, as has been pointed out on the on the kind of discussion on this on Discord and on on, on Twitter, um, the main characters aren't sprites. There are a few sprites, um, but the the majority of the characters aren't sprites. So what you you'll notice is that Player Two's vest is a sprite which I guess is because it's, an e it's easier to just draw the same character and then stick a sprite over to add the extra colour on. Um, because A, it will avoid colour clash, and B, it's just better than having two different um, sprites for the players. Um, and, and two, the other thing is when... So there is a line, it's about this line here. Um, from here downwards to here, so from row... Oh, that's incorrect, so I might need to look at that. That's not loaded in the correct. This is what I mean about that, that, that D00 area, so I need to look at that. I'll try and fix that in a minute. Um, yeah, so from here, from line 14 down to here, line 22, is where the characters are drawn. Anytime the characters move outside of this area, it becomes a sprite, so it becomes a sprite in this upper area, and I think that's to, to prevent the colour clash happening up here. I'm just going to restart that. Because... Oh, see, it's drawn correctly. So this map draws correctly, the other one doesn't. Okay. I need to figure out why it's doing that. Um, yeah, so so you can see, every time, the, every time the player's sword or their head goes above this line, it, it turns into sprites, um, and that's because the colours here can be completely different to the colours down here, and so the the barbarian being drawn in bitmap wouldn't work in this this top area. You'd get colour clash. So let me show you um, in the infiltrator debugger what's going on there. Um, why did they program it this way? I'm guessing because it was probably written, um, so so the, the Commodore was kind of unusual in that it had hardware sprites. Not a lot of computers from the 80s had hardware sprites. Um, in fact, I can the only one I can think of the 8-bit from the 8 bits is the TI. No, is it the TI? It was one. Of, there weren't many. Most of them would use bitmaps and would blitz. So the Spectrum would do it like that. The Amstrad would do it like that, um, and so it was probably written using bitmap blitting to begin with. Um, and rather than kind of reinvent the wheel, they probably took um, chunks of the code from from these other platforms and, and reused it like that. Um, plus, it has a kind of it has a slightly jerky feel to the movement. I think if they'd have done it with sprites, it would have lost that and it would have felt different. And they probably wanted it to stay exactly the same. Um, yeah, the Atari, yeah, the, the Atari 2600 had a really weird way of doing sprites because um, they weren't sprites, like you say, they were they were player missiles. But you could change on every line. You could change where where it was and how big it was, so you could use it to generate sprites in a weird kind of way. Um, that's why Atari 2600 programmers are pretty good with Commodore stuff because it's 6502, and they know about the kind of individual raster lines uh, to do these things. Um, ah, the MMX had it as well, did it? Oh, the MMX was... Uh... Yeah, the MMX is also... Yeah, hardware sprites, that's right. The TI-99 had hardware sprites, I thought so. The MMX is another bitmap blitting one, isn't it? Um, okay, let me load in this vice snapshot again. I'll show you what's going on. Yeah, Commodore was kind of cutting edge with that stuff. They, they really did kind of do things in a much better way than, than most other people did. So what this infiltrator 
disassemble lets you do is it lets you look at the memory as if it was all sprites so if I click on multicolor and I click on an area you can see there so if I if I just change uh, for some reason it doesn't have the normal colors in it you have to like pick custom colors if you want so we know the barbarians kind of pink so let's find a pink that looks roughly um, roughly right I mean, it doesn't really matter, does it? As uh, as long as it's yeah, that'll do. It's kind of wrong, but um, and he has black hair. So let's change that to. Oh no, that's the sword. So let's leave that on uh, grey. Change that to black, and then change the background to. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Let's change it to blue. The game makers were not keeping up with Commodore. Yes. So what what I first noticed when I did this was um, how everything is still kind of in sprites. So so these are laid out to be exactly exactly as sprites. If you try and look at the bitmap area like this, you'll see uh, it doesn't look like um, it doesn't look like the map at all. And that's because the the bitmap is not in kind of uh, columns of three. Uh, 21 columns of three, uh, 21 rows of three columns, um, like sprites are. So it just looks like a jumbled mess. Um, so the fact that these kind of look like players means they're actually set up like sprites. So they've they've been designed with a sprite editor probably at some point. Um, but what you'll notice is they fill up. So they they start around about 0800. So they start in the basic RAM area pretty much, um, and then they go all the way up. Um, through an entire Vic Bank. So, so up to this point is an entire Vic Bank. So from zero all the way up to here is one Vic Bank. So that's one full Vic Bank of sprites. Um, and then they continue on a little bit more. There's a few more sprites down here. Even more sprites here. This is the player vest down here. Um, so it's you're looking at one and a half Vic Banks of, uh, of sprites. Um, so that's, that's probably another reason they didn't do it as well because there was just too many sprites to do. Um, but what it means as well is if they want to, um, if you want to draw the player outside of that kind of dividing line, you can quickly just grab the sprite that corresponds to that. So you'll see, uh, you know, heads um, here. Uh, there's, you know, the, the the rolling head is done with a sprite as well. Um, so yeah, it was it was a lot of memory taken up. I mean, we're looking at. Six pages, so six lots of four, 24k of just just sprite data. Um, it's, it's quite a lot. Um, so yeah, that's that's how that's how the the sprites are. Well, the the characters are kind of built up using um, sprite-sized chunks of data. Um, and what we'll do in a, in well, once we, we'll try and get a background in. Um, and then once we have a background in, we'll have a look at actually how these are being um, blended into the background. I have an idea how they're probably doing it, um, but I, I don't know. I'm going to have to have a look to see that. I've, I had a quick look at the disassembly, and I'm just going to show you what I thought was suspicious um, and let you think about it. I'm not going to tell you what I think it is, but I'm going to show you an area of memory which I think is suspicious. Um, so I think it was this area here. Was it this one? Or was it down? Oh, no, here. Yeah, so this this kind of hole... No, that's the... That was a bit further on, actually. I think it was up here somewhere. Yeah, this kind of area. So there's a lot of these kind of repeating patterns. Yeah, you probably can't see them, actually. Um... But there's a lot of kind of repeating patterns. It looks like there's some tables up here. Um, I think I think this is how they're they're doing it. Um, but I'll I'll explain in a bit more detail. Um, oh, I didn't notice that before. That's pretty interesting. Ah, cool. Um, okay, so let's let's have a look at the the images that. Um, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how. 
uh, it's laid out in the bitmap. So let me open up um, the game in here before I show you the, the absolutely wonderful guy, uh, files that the, uh, some of the guys in Discord have sent. Um, and seriously, guys, thank you for those. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. I'm really looking forward to doing some stuff with those, as you will see in a minute. So what's happening is from this corner here down to this corner here. So this kind of square here is being redrawn. Um, so when the level starts, it, it like you, you'll notice it blacked out and then fills up. Um, and when it fills up, it's obviously pulling this data from somewhere in memory. And then what's happening is this area here um, with the players in it um, is being drawn every frame, or at least the area where the players are is being drawn every frame. Um, you can see that actually, if I go into the debugger again um, and put it into Vic mode, which is not that, that's quit. Eman Barbarian version. I saw it. I didn't download it though, um, as I, I was trying to find a clean, normal version. But I imagine they've changed the sprites as well. Um, it would be very easy to do actually. I mean, the the fact that they're all nicely laid out like that in memory is is kind of kind of cool. Uh, okay, let me see if I can find the right screen for doing this. There we go. So this screen, which is Control Shift F6, allows you to kind of play around with the uh, the, the graphics in here. Uh, and what you'll notice, and can I draw with this one? Yeah. What you'll notice is if I draw here, anywhere in this player area is getting drawn over. So, so this entire block is being drawn every frame um, because no matter where I draw, it's it's staying be it's not staying behind. Whereas if I draw in the area that isn't the player. You can see it's it's staying there. Same up here as well. So you can kind of see the area. If I if I do do this all over, you'll see where it's actually being drawn. Um, interesting. It looks like this block here is also being drawn, um, and I'm also managing to color the players in. Probably because I'm changing the color ramp in that location. If I if I change this, I'll color the players back in um, in the correct colors. Um, so that's interesting. I hadn't noticed that before. That the this area here also seems to be, for some reason, uh, drawn every frame. So we can have a look at that. Um, you know, so this is drawable. You, again, you can see where the where the scores drawn. This is drawn every frame. So everything that's being blanked out is being drawn every frame. Um, which is quite quite an effort. I mean, that's quite a lot of bitmap to be drawn every frame. It, it might not seem like that much, but considering it's being drawn um, using bitmap data, that's quite a lot. Okay, we definitely need to fix that level, so we need to figure out where that's coming from uh, and fix that. Um, but before, before we do that, um, let's have a look at the uh, wonderful images that you guys have shared with us. So. Um, we had three. Let me just check this call. I don't think there were any more. I didn't see any more before we started. Um, no. Okay, so we've had three come in. So the first one was from Colt. Um, I think I'm going to have to open this in Pixen. Now, for some reason, as Steps pointed out to me today, um, Pixen seems to like to save things at full size like this. However, Colt's doesn't. Colt's seems to work perfectly at the right size. Um, so he's produced this nice uh, castle, I believe it's from um, somewhere where he used to live. Um, oh, and just to point out as well, there are some colour limitations. Because of the way uh, the players are constantly redrawn in this area, the colour ram in this location doesn't change. Um, and the colours need to be a specific set so that the barbarians can always be drawn correctly in the right locations. So the background is, is a brown colour. Um, and then there is grey, black and pink for the Barbarians, as we saw in the uh, debugger. Uh, I don't know what that was, I missed it. Oh, it's a follow. Thank you, TL974, for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, good night, Dom. Sleep well, mate. I hope you feel better tomorrow. Rest up, that's what you need. Uh, 
Sakrats. Have I got the names wrong on here? Have I got them all mixed up? Oh. I do apologise. I've got the... Uh... Oh yes, of course. Sorry, I do apologise, Colt. Actually, did you provide one, Colt? Maybe I've I got mixed up here. No, I've just got mixed up, haven't I? Yes. Yeah, so sorry, Sackrat. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm I'm going to rename that as well because that's that's unfair for me to uh, discredit you in that way. To be honest, I just grabbed them all from Discord very quickly and I, I probably didn't read carefully enough what I was doing, so... Um, there we go. If you've got a few minutes of... Uh, fame there, comp. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful piece of art and I was impressed with how quick um, it appeared as well. I was not expecting anything kind of within 24 hours and... Um, in fact, the first two came within 24 hours as well, um, and it's it's a really nice piece of art. Um, and we've got uh, Steps as well, so Steps did one. Um, I think this is Steps' second version as well. I think there was another one without the, the, the kind of concrete bar at the top and the skulls on. But again, see how it's, it's kind of created this dead space around here. Um, Thankfully, when I've exported them, I've checked the exports. And I'll explain the exports in a minute and what they're what they're doing. Um, but again, yeah, no, nice piece of art. And there's stokers as well. Again, uh, another great piece of art, uh, and and very quickly done as well. I was very impressed. I'm choosing something deep in our game tools at work, so I need to do a lot of thinking before coding. So it's in time for art. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, there's there's a few there's a few nice tools out there. Um, I use Pixem because um, it, for me it's got the best um, conversion from um, from non C64 PNGs into into C64 palettes. It, it was just a bit easier. Um, but again, I mean they all do it to varying degrees. It's just finding the one that's right for you and that that works on a particular image. It may be that certain colour combinations work better than others uh, in different tools. Um, so I'm going to load up Sacrax again because that is the right size. Um, I had to copy and paste the others into a right size uh, window to, to make them work. Um, but what you can do when you save in, in Pixen, and I'm sure you can do this in, the, in other tools as well, I've just not looked, uh, you can save as a few different formats. So. A multicolor bitmap in in the format that Barbarian's using uh, needs screen RAM, which is uh, two of the colors. Um, it needs color RAM, which is a third color, um, and it needs bitmap RAM, which is the the uh, the actual data as to where the colors are turned on and off. Um, so you can save out those three three files, and that's what I've done with these. Um, so, what we're going to try and do, we're going to try and drop these into the game. So, the first thing to do, I, one thing I did note was that, um, let's, let's close this, was that the memory, I'm going to leave it a little bit over here so I can grab this file. Uh, the memory for the main screen when it first loads up is at uh, 6000, uh, which is... I, I've made a little piece of code here, so I'll, I'll uncomment this, I'll show you what it does, and then I'll explain um, what it's doing, uh, how it's calculated. Uh, I have to keep going in and doing this each time, so... Oops. Should I just leave that going? So what this has done is it's drawn, it's filled in this gap here. So this is the kind of left of the picture, um, and it's just filled this in. Um, so what you need to do to do this is you need to find where this top corner is. So you can do that in the debugger. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, and then you need to know how many rows it is, which we do know already. 
Um, although I've done one too many for... Oh no, that's, that's correct actually, it's going right down to the bottom. Um, and then, for, because it's a bitmap, instead of it being a single byte in each location, it's eight bytes, one for each row of pixels in, in a character. Um, and then I've done that for four columns, so this is uh, 32 bytes per row. And the way that works in here, um, I calculate the address. Um, it's also four characters across, so there's four characters here, and then this. So, because a bitmap is eight bytes per character area, um, those four characters here take up 32. So I know that the memory map starts. The memory map for this bitmap starts at 6,000. Let's start at 6,000. I move in four four bytes, four uh, characters. So 32 bytes, which brings me to here. Um, then I add the iterator, so one row, one single um, row of characters is 320 bytes, so it's 40 times 8, um, and I'm using this loop to iterate through them. Um, and then I add 7 times 320, which brings me down to this location here. So now I'm doing 16 rows um, of 32 bytes starting here, and then I just fill them with zeros. If I'd have filled these with, in fact I can make that much easier if I just use that. Um, so if I fill that with zero, I'll get the same result. If I filled it with FF, I'd get a different color in that location. Um, I do need to fix this screen. We'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Um, okay, so let's try compiling that. I would like to maybe take a, a, a quick peek at um, International Karate as well tonight, just to have a look. Um, yeah, there you go. So now it's using whatever color is in color ramp. Um, and you can see what I was saying about this this block, of, this area where the characters are has to be pink. So they cannot be changed. But up here they can be changed to whatever it needs for this background to be drawn. Um, uh, and down here again, because it's below the player area. Um, so this is this is kind of the location we need to be drawing things in. Um, so what we need to do is we need to import uh, the binaries. Uh, let me just open. I've got because I can never remember how to do this properly. So I'm just going to open another window just off screen so I can, can load some existing code where I've done this. I know it's kind of cheating, but not the sort of thing I do very often. Uh, do. Uh, that's it. Uh, where's the data? Where's the data? So what we're going to do, we're going to load one of the files in, um, and then we're slowly going to fill up the areas of, of RAM that we need um, with the data that we need. Um, might try to fix that weird bug as well in a minute, uh, because I, I believe that's to do with this this area here. Um, not being not being copied properly, or too much being copied. Um, I have a, I have a feeling what it's going to be. Um, I'll try it in a second. Uh, where is the sprite? There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do? We're going to uh, first of all we're going to load in some some variables. Let's just get rid of that down there for now. So we'll start with uh, bitmap data. And we're gonna load. We're gonna use the load binary command. Now, you could import data like this. You could do import binary, and then the file name here. Uh, but that doesn't give you any control over the data. It will just import that data wherever you want. What this does is it stores that data in a binary until you decide to use it. Um, so we're gonna start with. Well, we'll start with Sakrat because his was the first one to come in, and I believe that's. That probably needs version one because I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sakrak. Is your um, your version is with the brown background, right? Um, so I'm gonna need I'm gonna need version one, I believe. We are limited to four. Yeah, yeah. So so Doctor Miz, yeah. If you uh, I'll show you very quickly again in the debugger. Uh, let's put version one on there because I do need that. Um, 
the, the player's uh, shirt is a sprite, so it allows them to, to use an extra color. Um, that's one of the powerful things about sprites, actually, is that you there's no color clash with sprites. You, you can use whatever color you want and move it over the top. Um, it's used to great effect in a lot of things. Uh, I mean, you'll have seen it with uh, high-res overlays, a way of adding a, a fourth color uh, to a sprite and adding a bit more detail. Um, but it's also used in some interesting situations as well. So I've seen it used, uh, Creatures 1 used it for, uh, there's a narrow um, on the get ready screen, which shows you where you spawn and points. And that, that arrow has eight colors in it, even though it's very small and tiny. And it's because it's just eight sprites laid over the top of each other. Um, yeah, so, so so there aren't many sprites. The sprites are literally just if they go above this line. So anything of the players that goes above this line, you see it there as he jumped and did the spin. As the sword goes up in the air, it turns into a sprite. Um, his chest piece because it's it's um, it's turquoise, uh, and also. If you chop a head off and it rolls, that becomes a sprite, and the little green alien that walks across is a sprite as well. <coughs> so they probably didn't need to do a multiplexer in here. Um, but there are raster splits, you can see them. So you can see the background's black here as I move down. The background actually turns to, to dark grey instead. Um, so black, you can see the steps go black when I'm here, but down here it's grey and this goes grey instead of black. So. Yeah, sprite overlays is really good. If you can afford the, the memory to, to use them, then definitely use them. They're, they're nice. Unfortunately, I, I don't have that luxury in Dock, unfortunately. But it's fine. I think it kind of... Dock suits the kind of the multicolor feel, I think. It doesn't. I don't think it would work too well with Ira sprites. Okay, so... We're going to load in this file now, so we're going to, we're using version 1 for the brown background and we're going to load in, uh, we'll just start with the uh, the bitmap data, so we want sacrack.map, okay, so if we load that in here, so .map is the uh, bitmap data, which is this data that lives here, um, oops, where's that popped up? For some reason, I keep getting stupid notifications from, from places. I've got into the habit of just kind of blindly clicking on things when, when it's asking me for GDPR permissions, and now I get all sorts of notifications I don't want. Um, weird they didn't use sprites for the snake heads, uh, then again, they had already built a pretty powerful char engine. Yeah, that would have made a lot of sense actually. Um, uh, and yeah, when when you uh, like it's one snake for each player, and when you when you get hit, they hiss. Kind of cool. Um, okay, so we've loaded the contents of this into uh, a file called bitmap data, and now what we're going to do, um, we're going to use this block of code, which is going to go through the same area, um, sixteen rows, which is I think there's too many actually. I think we needed fifteen. Let me bring up the calculator. It's 120, so yeah, it's 15, not 16. So we need to do 15 rows. And this time, um, same location. We're, we're, we're going to start in that corner uh, piece that we had. I'm going to start by sort of again just to demonstrate where I'm on about. Whoops. Uh. <laughs> So we're going to start in this this corner piece as usual, um, but we're just going to go down to here. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have drawn. Like, yeah, that extra row there is unnecessary. That's not that's not going to change. It's only from here to here that we're drawing. Um, so it's 50 rows, uh, and we're still going to draw um, two. Wait a minute, it's how many how many was it it was 256 bytes across so we're going to fill 256 and then the way we do this is you do uh, 
Uh, let me double check my other things just to make sure I get this right. Uh, yeah, so you you can take this and you can get a value at a location. Um, I, I need to change that because the variable is going to clash. Um, so when you use a fill command, um, this will count from zero to two five five and pass it into I. Um, so we want we want um, that position in the bitmap um, plus. Oh, I, keep having, I keep missing my chats. Uh, plus, what would it be? It would be plus 256 times J. So this will cycle through the entire bitmap, one row at a time, filling it in. And hopefully that should give us a, a new map in that location. For if I've done this right. I've not done this before, so this is kind of new. Is that done it I think it yeah so it has but the colors are wrong but that's fine um, cool so we've actually got we've actually got the right map in there now so what I'll do now is we'll implement that I think actually the colors might need flipping around here I think on this row am I, I can't think if that's correct or not it might need the colours flipping, but we can look at that in a minute. Um, let's let's get the rest of the colours in, um, and let's see if we can fix this this weird glitch on the second level. Um, so I'm going to attempt to fix that glitch by stopping this when we get to DC instead of E0. I think it that, I think it's that last three, uh, that the last four pages of IO RAM um, that we're filling with junk that we shouldn't be doing. I'm going to leave that, turn that off. Um, and then we can use overwrite. So what we can do is we'll load another one of Sacrack's files in, which will be uh, sacrack.col. And this is is this yeah this is color ramp. Okay. And this time we're just going to directly stick that into D800. Um, it will overwrite the one that we're importing up here, um, and we can just do. Uh, actually, we can just import that. Let's just do import binary. So, because we don't need to do anything special. But, oh, actually, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Sorry. My bad. We need to do this again. Um, but this time we need to do it from D800. Um, we're not doing it as um, bitmap. This is color RAM, so we divide these values by four. Uh, no, by eight, sorry. So that gives us that. Because now we're working in character space. Uh, In that part of screen must use a lot of rest of time. Yeah, it's interesting actually. I, I'm gonna we'll look into the code shortly and see how long it actually does take. We can um, we can probably inject a, a border color change to show when it starts and when it finishes. But I imagine it's quite a lot. Um, but it certainly explains why it's slow. I I mean, if it was me, I would have just drawn the area that's changing. But they're they're drawing the whole thing, this whole entire row. Um, they could have cut that down to maybe a quarter, um, but maybe it was easier to just do it really quick in a kind of unrolled loop or, or a relatively fast loop, um, rather than you know, rather than try and calculate a particular area. It would have been an extra overhead. It probably was just as fast to do the whole thing. Um, What's interesting as well is because they're doing this on the whole area, they could have actually added a third or fourth player quite easily into this. Um, and it doesn't use double buffering as well, which is interesting. I th I think it is just a li I think the frame rate is a little bit off. Um, uh, but again, I'll, I'll show you why I think that is as well. 
um, shortly. Um, I think it's to do with how they blend this data in um, uh, from the sprites into the into the, the main thing. I think, in fact, I'll, I'll explain now what I think is going on. So if you imagine a sprite, um, uh, the sprite data, so when you read the sprite you've got um, it, it's, it's three columns repeated 21 times. So each column has uh, a number in it which applies to in multicolor mode four multicolor pixels for that for that area now if you were to blend that into a bitmap um, and you allowed full pixel freedom then you would have to change that number you would have to uh, shift that number around to get it to merge properly in and then you would have to merge it with uh, you'd have to or it with two different areas so what you'll notice with the barbarians is they tend to stick into character areas. They tend to move eight pixels at a time in any one direction. Um, I'll show you that now. And I think that's why they feel... I don't think it's actually the speed of the game. I think it's just a deliberate design choice um, that makes it feel slightly jerky. Um, so if you look at the characters... Um, as they move around. Let me zoom in on, on them so you can see the grid. So if you look at the grid um, and I pause, you'll see how the player's head, so when the player's stood up like this, his head is kind of in this location. Um, and let me zoom in on him again. It's kind of hard to catch him in the same position. But basically when it's using the same sprite, it seems to be always in the same location uh, in a in a character block, and I think that's just because it makes it quicker to merge that in with the background. Um, and this is probably why it feels slow. I don't. If you look at the, if you actually look at the um, uh, this area here, there's no double buffering going on. There's nothing that's changing this bitmap location and screen location every frame. Frame. It is literally just updating it on the fly directly to the screen so they probably start as soon as the raster gets to here they probably start doing an update um, so that by the time it gets down to here it's fine because it could take from here all the way back to here again as long as it's drawing from top down so it's drawing ahead of the raster and then it should be fine Yeah, I must admit, back in the day, it felt like an incredibly smooth, smooth game. Um, but playing it again recently, I realised it is kind of not j janky is the wrong word, but it, it's definitely not as smooth as um, I remembered it being. Okay, so let's add this bit in. So we we're doing rows of characters now, so we need to divide this by eight. So it's thirty-two characters. I say characters, it's actually colours, but they're in ca character space. So. Uh, times J and there we go and this is not bitmap data this is color RAM data color RAM data there okay let's give that a compile uh, overlaps good overlap I've got allow overlap doing that. Okay, let's just remove that one. It's not actually necessary at the moment because now we're replacing it with our own colours. So it's still not quite right. Um, I think partly because now the original colours that we needed done here that were loaded from here have been overwritten. Um, so I'll have to work that out as well. Um, but for now let's try and get the background working. I'm going to go for a, a quick two or three minute break. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of a think about this. Uh, and then we'll we'll do the same with the screen colour am and we should be able to see if the colours are correct. It's looking like uh, pink and brown need swapping. Um, just 
trying to think if we can do that programmatically. In fact, I think we can do that in Pixen. Um, so I'll, I'll take a look at that when we come back. Uh, so yeah, uh, give us two or three minutes, guys, and we'll continue on again. All right, be right back. So cool, I'm back, and uh, Colt has just come up with a great idea. So we'll we'll do that here now. We we'll create another segment. Call it patch two, I guess. Um, then we can guarantee that this will get overlaid over this, so we can put the original colours back in. Um, and then we add patch two in here. Uh, death. Do I have to also do it here? I'm, I'm not totally cleared up on how segments work. I'm going to try that. I might have to put this death down here somewhere instead. Uh, let's just try that. So let's give that a compile. And that hasn't worked. Oh, and that seems to have compiled. Yeah, it is a very cool engine, considering the age of it. It's uh, it's very impressive. Uh, is that music all right? It seems I can hear it a bit more than I could before. Let me know if it's too loud. Ah, there we go. We've got the colours back. Yeah, good good plan there, Colt. Thank you. Um, okay, so the other thing we need to add in is the screen RAM. Um, so in bitmap mo mode, screen RAM is what we use to define the multicolor values. Um, so instead of it actually drawing characters on the screen, it just sets the upper nibble is used for one color, the lower nibble is used for another one. And I know that this is at 4400, so I'm going to copy this routine because it's exactly the same uh, spacing as in you know 40 characters along and just swap it for screen RAM data and I think that should give us the proper colors in there so we'll we'll have a look and if we need to adjust the uh, colors we'll have a go at messing around in um, in Pixel and see if we can do it I'm pretty sure you can in Pixel I'm sure you can swap the colors around and there we go we have something that's almost working. So we compare that to the original uh, image. Uh, find the original image. Uh, where's the GPX file there it is? Yeah, so it's, it's actually just that lower area that seems to be wrong. Um, it looks like... I'm not entirely sure actually. Um, where we can try swapping some colours around and see what happens. Um, it could be that actually this bottom area might not actually want colours setting in it because they're already set. Let's try not putting those colours in the bottom area. So after... how many rows was it did I say? Was it seven, seven rows of colour wasn't it? So let's do... Let's do seven there and seven here. So now we're only setting the first seven rows of these colours. Try that. Might be that it works. Uh, play this game so much on the M. Oh, welcome to the stream, Red Falcon. A new, new face, always good to see. Yeah, it looked very colourful actually on the uh, on the uh, CPC. But then again, everything did. It had, it had quite a nice palette, actually. Okay, yeah, so... So the game itself is setting these, these colours to what, what it needs them to be, so that these characters are drawn. We can't change the, the, the colours, because then the barbarians themselves would change colour. So what we need to do is we need to go in uh, and do some swapping of the colours in the file. Now let's just check the original file. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because it looks like it's just this area down here that needs adjusting. Um, I'm not sure how we would do that, actually. Let's try it 
trying to think what 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 could we do to make that work because it looks like gray needs to be black and black needs to be gray needs to be black black needs to be gray maybe no black needs to be pink tricky one so let, let's have a look let's see what we can do so are there any tools for yeah remapping colors uh, can we do it with a selection though? Uh, select the marker. Okay, so we can select an area. Oops. Um, we need to select. This really isn't the best tool for doing this. So this is probably where another tool like the uh, multi paint would be would be better at it. Uh, I don't know why that's not letting me... Oops. Did you flood fill just the path? Uh, you see this This is still garbled here. Um, so something we're doing in that, that area up here is doing something wrong. Um, but we'll take a look at where that is. I think there's another bitmap stored in memory somewhere and we're overriding it with junk basically. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at that shortly. I'm just going to change that to the 8 for now because I know this does work. Um, but you do end up with a little bit of interference. My trick is to copy a character with the correct colours in the space that needs to be corrected and then paste over the original. See, I don't know enough about how artists do these things. Um, so if anybody wants to, to give it a try um, and can do it before I can figure out how to do it, then please feel free because I I'm really am just guessing at this moment in time. I'm going to try that. And I'm going to try remap colours. So we're going to map. It's almost like black needs mapping to multicolor one. No. And see that's doing it on the whole picture, which is and I can't undo. Damn it. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 changing these colours. In the player area it's changing all the colours. So no matter what what you set here. So if I if I go into uh, into this routine and just copy this so it does uh, row row seven to fifteen and then I fill it with like uh, I don't know, something obvious like a yellow uh, then no matter what I change there, it's still gonna be it's still gonna be wrong. Uh, it's still gonna get overridden. Sorry by the by the game. Yeah, see. So it looks like not only is it doing um, not not only is it changing the 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 character ram in this location, it's changing the color ram as well. In fact, we can we can test that by trying to change the color ramp uh, on the fly now. So if I if I fill the entire color ramp with yellow, uh, and then go. Oh, actually, no, it's kept it. So it must only do it once at the beginning of the round. Um, but you can see how the players need to match the color of of the of the of the planks. And what we've got is. Yeah, so below in this bottom area here, everything that's brown should be pink. So we're going to swap one with three. So if we go, we map colors and we'll map pink to brown like that. That hasn't done anything, has it? 
And also, this is only mapping this bottom area as well, so... Um, yeah, so... Uh, Sakrag, if you want to give this a try, I think you need... in this On these bottom eight rows, um, from the kind of horizon that you've got um, down, the... Uh, let me restart that again, so I can see a bit clearer. It looks like brown needs to become pink. Um, yeah, brown needs to become pink. Let me fill the memory in here with some other colours. So, if I if I do that again, and then I fill uh, this area, we should be able to see a little bit better. So, if I fill this with a uh, red and purple for instance um, oh there's a monitor I want filled okay so it's making a bit of a mess of the screen but we should now be able to see uh, what we need to do so uh, the players shorts and hair are normally black um, so Yeah, so whatever is currently brown needs to change to pink. Whatever is currently pink needs to change to black. Uh, brown is the background colour, so that's not going to change. And what does that leave? Black, grey. That should be enough, I think. I think that should be enough. I think you need to swap pink and black. Oops. But it still looks like this would be the wrong colour. Okay, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna I'm gonna remove the bits of code we don't need. I'm just gonna copy these lines. I'm gonna keep them in there for now. Um, just comment them out and we're gonna try one of the other files to see. So um, we have let's try stokers. Kind of interesting because this week is very much being um, a kind of design week, really. So the the, the game stream on Saturday is going to be um, mostly uh, talking about uh, the the game design uh, and what we plan for it. Um, we're going to try and drop some uh, graphics in. Um, I've got tomorrow off from work, and I'll spend some time on Saturday as well. Um, trying to collate some graphics together. The Furrow has done some really good work with that. I'm going to try and um, add to that with some background art. Um, Sprite-wise, we'll keep the sprite we've got for now, but we will change that sprite eventually. Um, but yeah, this this weekend stream is going to be a bit light on the on the tech stuff, and it's going to be more about the game design. So hopefully, those who aren't as kind of assembly savvy should be able to get uh, a bit more involved as well. Stoker's map is designed for the... Okay, so let's load version 2 up then in that case. And then compile that. So this is what you get when you... Uh, when you do some very, very basic research into how the colours are set out. Um, uh, yeah, see we've got the same same kind of issues in here. Um, although this is weird, the colours up here are a bit odd. The word that is. But let's have a look at what Stoker's map looks like.
Uh, okay, so this looks like it's using black as a background color throughout. Um, but actually, I think there's a large section of this that seems to be using gray for background color. It's not going quite as easy as I thought to do this, unfortunately. Uh, this looks like it needs black and gray swapping, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. It looks like it looks like gray and black are both being turned to gray in this area up here, at least. Um, and we've got a similar kind of mishmash of colors going on down here. Damn, this is not becoming. This is not quite as easy as I was hoping it would be. A bit of a shame. Okay, let's try Steps' map as well. Steps is your map. Your map is meant for this one as well, isn't it? If I remember rightly. Let's see if any of them work first time. Steps. Uh, after the stream as well, I'll drop all these. This file. Um, and all the contents of these folders into um, the GitHub, um, which I will paste a link to now in the chat. Um, so at the moment, all that's there is the dissect from uh, the previous stream, the last V8. Um, but I'm start every time we do a, a, a patch game like this, I'm going to upload it to uh, GitHub. So. Uh, so you guys can have a mess around with it. Uh, with three hours is generally not enough time to get everything done that we want to do on these streams. Um, so feel free to dig in and have a mess around. If you want to, if if you've done something that's working better than than us already in the GitHub, which we, <laughs> with this game it looks like you might be able to do quite easily, um, then please just if you know how to do it, uh, drop a pull request into GitHub. If you don't, just ask me on Discord. Um, I'll drop a link to the Discord in the chat now. Um, just ask someone on the Discord and they can show you how to do a pull request or I myself can show you how to do a pull request and we'll get it added to the, the code. Um, if anybody does do a pull request um, and we, we add it to the code then we'll we'll go over it on the next dissect stream just to show the kind of improvements that have been made. Okay, let's try this one. Yeah, so as Colt says, it looks like they get overwritten on the fight start, and that's that's true. Um, oh, the colours, you mean? No. So what what's happening is is that that lower area, um, yeah, is it gets overwritten um, uh, with very specific data for the barbarians because they they use uh, they use three of the colours. Um, to, to display so they those three colors have they do get overridden um a little bit, a bit of echo it's a bit weird. okay uh, let's try loading steps is in um but they're also loaded from a different location somewhere am i getting an echo what's that about got this loaded in somewhere else Oh, cool. Uh, so Sacrax uploaded something to the to the Discord. I shall have a look in a second. Oh, why can I hear myself? That's very uncertain. Let me see if I can just turn this off. Uh... Oh, that should be fine. I don't know why that is. So again, we've got the same issue here. So it seems to be something weird going on with the um, with the colours in this area. Sid music, yep, yeah, no problem. Let me know if that's all right. I need to work out where this echo is coming from. It's, it's driving me insane. Yeah, I shouldn't be hearing it now. Why am? Okay. 
go with that. Okay, so let's have a look at the new version on Discord. Oh, so you swapped on the whole thing, is that is that right? Okay, so what I need to do now is save those out. I'm still getting an echo. I really don't know why I'm getting that echo. It's very frustrating. Uh, okay, so we need to find our project, which is here. And we need to save out. Uh, let's start with the screen RAM. And it's that crack, there we go. And we'll start, uh, we'll do the next one, which is uh, Color Ram. Call. And then, I really wish there was a single button to do all this. That crack map, there we go. Cool. And. Version 2 of the game, uh, version 1 we need, okay. Is that a build? Let me check what multicolour is the pink one on the player charts. Yeah, we can, I can do that in a second in the debugger. We'll, we'll go through some um, cancel the marquee to see. Have I done that right? It looks the same. Or is it is the whole thing kind of colour flipped? That we'll see anyway. See if this has worked. Oh, it's definitely better, but for some reason the black Black should be grey. So it's it's grey and black need flipping. On the bottom part, yeah. That's a lot better though. It's almost there, isn't it? <laughs> One off, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Sure, Sack Crackle will send us another one in a second, so I'll leave that there. So we're getting there. Let's let's have a look at um, uh, the multicolors in in the debugger. Oh, hang on. What's that? Oh no, it's, it's the channel. All right. Let's open up the debugger and take a look at those multicolors. So we can see what's going on. Uh, we need to do this with the original version of the game. Uh, so I'm going to take the file. That we're using so we're using version one on Sacrax version so let's load that in there um, apparently that's loaded but it doesn't look like it right again okay right again really weird that should not be doing that um, should be f oh look in the memory there 5940 that's not right something's not right there 38911 that's better right let's load like this not airwolf we want barbarian part one Seems to be doing something really, really odd. Um, why is it doing this now? Okay, I can uh, I can just load the original. It's, it's, it takes just a little bit longer. That's all. There we go. 
loud again. Yeah, it could be. I'll turn it down now. Okay, so let's have a look in the Vic panel on this, uh, which is six. Enjoy shift at six. There we go. So if we zoom in on this and pause it, um, does it tell us the individual characters? It just tells a sprite. I thought there was a way of seeing bitmap colours as well, but apparently not. Ah. No, it's not that, is it? These are the... That one. Uh, not that one. Hmm. And this only gives me... Uh, it's all about trying to figure out how to use this thing. That's what this stream is for. It's about figuring this out and making sure we understand what's going on. Uh, oh, actually, we do have we do have some colours down here. So if I, I know this just let me select them. Don't don't see anything that's turning that data on and off. I'd have lost my sprite thing there. Again, if the head of sprite color four is being selected to be the same in the charts, yes, I would imagine whatever. That's a very good point, actually. If we have a look in the sprite data instead, um, and have a look in here, I think. Which is hang on, which is the sprite colors now? It's these two, isn't it? Uh, let me check. On memory map, I think it's D zero two five and D zero two six. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's it's basically these two here. So this is multicolor one. This is multicolor two. Um, and it uh, it will match, I guess, in there. So because otherwise it would make the it would make the um the merging together kind of complicated. Could you work it out from looking at the sprites in Infotrail? That's a very good point, actually, sir. Let's have a look. Um. Oh, Sackrack's uploaded another version. So before we do that, let's have a go at uh, grabbing that version. So let me bring up this again. Uh, let me get the one from Discord. This is it. I feel this is it this time. Want to save? Nope. Yeah, I'm, I, it confuses me because I don't see the colour actually change. I just think, oh, it can't possibly be right. But... Um, Shows what I actually know about how graphics work, so... Uh, so, going to here, assets... We want... We'll start with screen RAM. And then... Color RAM. What am I doing? I'm going the wrong place again. And then bitmap RAM. There we go. Cool. Right. I'm feeling confident about this one now. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Like Windows. I got a message. Does I have a message? But I see it. Is. Okay, so barbarian bin crack. I think this is going to be it this time. Hey, there we go. And let's just compare that to our original. And yep, sure enough, that looks really good. Actually, I like that. That's cool. There we go. We've got we've got one down. 
Uh, is that exactly right? What's... Oh yeah, because you've got the same colour switch there. Yeah, it is. It's right, isn't it? It's perfect. Matches exactly. Yep. Cool. So, I guess... If... Uh, Sakrat can... Detail... Oh, mind you, it's probably going to be different for each... Each image. Uh... So there's an. Is this the only? This is the only one for this version, isn't it? So let's get the other picture working on this version. Uh, work out what's actually going wrong there, and see what happens when when the, when the picture's redrawn. Because it's probably not going to redraw this picture again, I don't think. So let's let it switch. Let's let it switch to another screen, which it's going to do now. So this one is wrong. So we need to work out where this is being drawn from and replace that data. And we'll let this fight run out and then we'll see if it loads the other map back in. Hopefully it does. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, char pads the same actually. Char pads multi colours are in a weird order. To be honest, the Commodore colours are in a weird order. When you're in multicolour mode, um, you would expect um, both bits being set to be the main colour, but it's not. But it is on the sprites, I believe. Something like that. It's, it's weird, anyway. So we're just going to let this fight play out, and hopefully we'll see if it's going to keep loading that same screen in. So if it loads the, the correct screen in, um, we know we don't have to load it anywhere else. It may be that they're buffered from somewhere else in memory. Um, and we can check in Infiltrator to see where that's happening. Um, that's the case. And we can even use the uh, the C64 debugger to see where it's being written from, to and from. We can use breakpoints in there to see when these memory addresses get written to, where they're being written from. Um, so we'll do that in a second. Let's just let this right play out. Okay, so now it should switch back to the other map. So the interesting thing is which map are we going to see? Cool. So the first map is always going to be in this location. So this uh, this this location here is map one. So let's call that map one. Now we know that's whenever you go back to that map it's always going to show you that again, which is very cool. Makes sense. You wouldn't want you wouldn't want two copies of it. You would just want it to switch the bitmaps over. So at some point, this bitmap is going to be pushed into another area of memory. In fact, that's a really good way to work out what's going on here. So we'll wait for the map to uh, change again, and then we'll take a snapshot and then we'll load it into Infiltrator and see if we can see where this map is being pushed to. Because what I think is going to happen, because bitmaps are quite big, it would be insane for you to have two bitmaps in memory and one of them at a time gets copied into this location. Uh, and the fact that we're seeing this map again would imply that it's not. What it's doing is it's swapping the two. So there's probably a blank area of memory that it's it's using to kind of copy, um, to swap areas, to, to swap the bitmap data over. That's a really good point. We can speed it up with Alt-W. There we go. Excellent. Um, so I think now if we take a snapshot uh, I'm not going to call it I'm going to call it Bob. There we go. Um, I'll just pause that. Open it up in here. I think we should be able to find Sakrak's image somewhere in memory. Again, open up the BMP um, and then start having a look around. Um, and we know we know this is the location of the current map, and you can see there it's a bit messy and not quite right. So uh, can we set the colours in here and then they carry over? I don't think we can actually because they're defined by screen RAM and colour RAM. Oh, let's have a look. So this is the... 
Oh, cool. But I imagine, I imagine this is the, this is the kind of view you've taken of it. And if you guys can see that. Very cool. And it's got the kind of typical uh, kind of copper roofs as well that you see in a lot of Scandinavian architecture. I really like that that kind of colour that you see when the the, the copper's been um, oxidised like that. Yeah, it is a very good job. Very very well done. It looks really nice. Um, well, let's work out where that that map has gone to. So I think it's it's gone somewhere around here. It would this looks like it could be it. You see this look of memory here. This looks suspiciously like like it is the uh, is is that area. So where is this in memory? This is we've got some black area. Let's have a look at what's actually how it's built up. Okay, so we have this kind of whole row, and then across. I'm just trying to see if I can see anything that makes up this top row up here. So let's have a look at this top row. So we would see seven spaces and then across. Uh, could it be could it be this bit here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, maybe. What's that? Is that the same? I don't think it is, is it? Uh Ah, there we go. See this bit here? I think that is this here. So the question is, is it counting the blank space at the edges or is this just going to be um, sequential without any gaps at the edges? And this is at what location this is let's change the colors a little bit so we can get a bit more clarity on that so none of these colors are going to work because they're they they don't match properly what it should be um, which is a good point actually so the colors are going to have to be stored somewhere as well so we'll have to figure that out soon um, let's bring up which one was it that had the best well, this seems to be enough to tell what's going on um, and it kind of matches with what we've got going on here. This looks like the bottom of the moon here. Um, is there any other pattern? Yeah, the cross is here as well. And the top of the moon is there. So if that's the top of the moon, this location here, whatever this white is here, is the start of our... Um, uh, the start of our bitmap data and it looks like it's not including the gaps on the edges now the question is I don't know how to find out what that memory location is how are we going to do this let's have a look at it in sprite mode although oh, no, this isn't going to work no sprite mode's not going to work uh, char set might work a bit better okay That was at well, C to D. Uh, green. Oh no, this is not going to show the charge yet. This is, ah, oh, damn it. I think it's at D00. Zero zero. I think it's back here somewhere. Let's let's try. Search the hex bytes from the B. Yeah, that's a good idea actually. Very good idea. Okay, right. See, this is why I like having you guys on stream because you you come up with the ideas that I really should be thinking of and yet I don't. And yeah, it's good having smart people on the stream to help me in those moments.
What about right a watch point to yeah so we will be doing that but I, I'm gonna try so that this will be good when we look at the colors because identifying where the colors are stored is gonna be very difficult to do uh, just by looking um, so hang on we've got yeah okay so I need to write out I need to write that out from the debugger. Okay, so let me do that first. Uh, so again, we load that by snapshot in, like so. Uh, and it doesn't really matter how we do this. Um, actually, yeah, it does because we're going to actually run it in in the debugger. Uh, FFC zero seem to be fine. PRG eight oh one. Export. Thank you, Callan, for the follow. Welcome to the stream. We're looking at old Commodore 64 games and we're trying to change the backgrounds currently in Barbarian. Um, it's going quite well, actually. Wait a minute, is this Callan? I know who Callan is. <laughs> Thanks for the sub as well, Callan. Is it the Cal I think it is? The fact that you called me such in there just makes me believe it is. Hi Hitch, welcome to the stream. Uh, maybe getting you out for Econ. Yeah, it's definitely Cal. So Cal goes way back, we used to play uh, MMOs back in the day. Um, not played for a while actually. And then I've been busy with this, so. That's probably why. Uh, okay, let's save that file out. Let's call it. Um, uh, let's just call it test PRG. It doesn't really matter at the moment. I'll load that into the. Uh, so how you doing, Cal? It's been a, it's been a while since I've spoken to you. What are you playing at the moment? That's jammed. Let me reset that. Yeah, there is no no really decent MMOs at the moment. It's a shame. It's Camelot Unchained coming though soon, hopefully. Uh, why is that not loaded properly? It's gonna work. I don't think this is gonna work. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, so this is a snapshot. So at the moment, somewhere in memory, we've got the other bitmap. Okay, so we need to load that other bitmap into here and take a look. So we're looking for sat crack map. Okay, so let's find that. And then we're going to look for this sequence of bytes here and here. So. Oops, not have done that. Can't undo, damn it. Alright, well we can check a bit further along, we know it's two bytes in. Yeah, Eve, I, you know I never really got into EVE Online. Um, it was just, it felt a bit grindy to me. I might have overwritten that one that as well. It was always a little bit too heavy for my liking. Although I'm really enjoying No Man's Sky. I know it's not a it's not a traditional MMO, or even an MMO for that matter. But it's really good fun at the moment. Um, I'm enjoying building my crazy evil underwater lair. So ah, interesting. It's not finding those values. So have I done something wrong? Fifty-four point seven. Let me delete a few of them. Let's narrow it down a little bit. And let's reduce the range it's going to search. <laughs> okay, that's just confusing. That is just confusing. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, he did Camelot again. Uh, did he do that on Uthgard or did he do that on the official servers? The Dark Age of Camelot was an amazing MMO. I don't know if any of you, you guys have played that. Um, it was an MMO that came out before Warcraft, maybe six or seven years before Warcraft. 2001, I believe. Um, and it was it was an amazing MMO, and it was a shame that, that WoW kind of killed it, really. Um, but it is still alive. People do still play it. Okay, we do have some kind of thing. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do the uh, the trick of doing a, a memory watch instead. Uh, we'll do it in Vice because it's a bit easy. Oh no, actually, we'll do it in the debugger. Okay, so let's delete this search here and go into breakpoints. Click a memory watch on. So we're looking for any rights to these areas. So bring up my calculator. We want uh, 6,000, I mean decimal, I mean decimal, so 6 times 4, 0, 6, uh, plus, what? Alright, let's do it in hex. 6,000, now switch into that, uh, plus. Uh, plus 32 plus 7 times 320 oh, what 7 times 320 what oh god it's all going wrong uh, what can I add up tonight I've not even had any alcohol. Right. I've got that number. I'm going to copy that just in case it disappears. Add 32. See, it did something wrong. So there. Add 32. Let me see. Add. God's sake, man. Right, there we go. I can program in assembly, but I can't actually use a freaking calculator. It's... Kind of embarrassing. 26848, okay, and we need that in here. 68E0, okay. Finally, so in here, 68E0, and we want any value at all, so anything less than that. Yeah, Lord of the Rings Online Hitch. I played that a little bit as well. Always made me laugh that you could play musical instruments at other people. Found that kind of funny. Yeah, three realm PvP. That's what it's going to take for for me to really enjoy um, an MMO again. It's been a while since there's been anything that good. Um, Elder Scrolls gave it a try, but it still wasn't quite right. Um, what was the other mythic one? Uh, Warhammer as well. But I'm kind of intrigued by uh, Camelot Unchained, it looks interesting. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing if that pans out to be as good as um, I hope it's going to be. Okay, so we're now watching for memory rights to that location. So now we'll just accelerate the game. Let them fight out. I think that's the main reason I don't play them at the moment, Carl, is that I just, I've got so many other things going on, I just don't have the time to dedicate to them. And if I do stuff, if I do dedicate to an MMO, that's just not gonna, it's, it's gonna affect everything else I do. Um, yeah, I need, I need something that's casual but still fun. I actually think Unchained can be like that, because it's purely PvP. I think it could work as a casual game. Okay, so we've got a right going on. So it's, it's paused now. Um, if we jump to that location, uh, which I should be able to do. It says it's this one, but that doesn't look right. That doesn't seem to be the right location, weirdly. 
uh, and the program counter up there is setting 8B69. Okay, it's actually here. No, that is, it's saying that's the, the location that's being written to, but it's not. Uh, uh. But we can look around this block of code. This is where Infiltrator does come in very useful, actually. So, Infiltrator makes it really, really quick to um, to investigate these areas of memory um, by debugging. So, we've already got the game loaded in here. Go to the disassembly. The problem is, is this doesn't scale very well on stream. As you can see, it's not actually resizing anything. Um, so, it's going to be quite hard for you guys to read. Um, so, I'll try and be as quick as I can in here. I don't think there's any settings to up the... Oh, font line... So there we go. Font. Let's try that. Let's maximise the font. That's as big as I can get it. I hope that's big enough, guys. And let's jump forward into the code. Let's see if we can find any copying looking code. So, code that's going to copy bitmaps like this is going to have kind of quite large blocks of LDA and STA next to each other. Um, and then some kind of loop. And what you can do is you can click you click anywhere. So you scroll through the code and click. You can see it shows you where all the jumps are. So we're looking for something that's got quite a small arrow pointing back up. Um, and with a large block of LDA STAs. So scrolling through, I don't see anything yet. Uh-huh. Yep, agreed. Yeah, I, I do think Camelot Unchained is going to be the one to, to watch. I think it's going to be... A, you're going to be able to play it casual because it's purely PvP. 3D modeling that called Poser for your work. You came up with the name Poser, yeah. Oh, you can read that. That's good. Thanks, Dr. Miz. I'm not seeing anything, so if anything jumps out, feel free to drop a, a message in the suggestions room. Um, I'll try and I'll keep up with it. I wanna f I'm going to go for a break in a few minutes, but I want to find this loop first. There's not an awful lot of code to scroll through, so it shouldn't take too long. Ah, here we go. So this looks interesting. So this is loading from a location. So I think this might be our temporary location. Uh, at least for colours or something. And here's another one. You see how the, you can see the loop. So you can see the arrow pointing between this block here. So we know this is looping through something very quickly. And another one here. <laughs> okay, I won't. I'll, I'll I'll try and leave it alone. Uh, the thing is, I'm I'm gonna have this uh, music bot hopefully working uh, for the Saturday stream. Um, and if I do, I, I might add a volume feature into it so you guys can kind of vote on a volume. I don't know how I'll, I'll, that'll work. I'll try and figure something out. Because I do want to give the guys who are a little bit less technical, um, but do like being in the stream anyway for the social aspect, something to kind of mess around with. So interesting, I'm not seeing anything that's copying to the 6, 6E00 area, so... Um, Okay, I'm going to take a short break and then we're going to come back and see if we can figure out where that is actually being stored. What we might actually just try is just dropping one of the maps into that location uh, and seeing what happens. Um, so yeah, I'll be right back in about... I'm going to leave the music as it is for steps. Um, I'm going to see you, see you in a few minutes. Alright, Cal, thanks for, thanks for coming along and thanks for the sub, mate. Um, I will speak to you soon. We'll sort something out. Alright, take care, guys. Uh, back in five minutes. Right, I'm back. Um, okay, so quick catch up. Okay, Colt says take out the basic upstart code and see if the program auto starts. The one I script starts with just the PRG files in the main segment. Okay, let's try that. 
Uh, do, do, do. I still need to import them in that location. I'm worried that it's not going to... See, the problem is the basic upstart code is it's needed to get those colours in. Um, I'll try it, but I have a feeling it's not going to play the colours correctly, but let's give it a try. Uh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't auto start, but I should be able to do. Uh, yeah, see, it, it doesn't put the correct colours on this area. It's that it's that same problem I had before. So th this code kind of is needed. I, I did put it in an area that isn't using anything, so it should be fine. Uh, there, it shouldn't um, shouldn't break anything. Hopefully. It's, it's because of that I.O. area, that's that's the problem. See, I mean, that, that looks amazing. That That's absolutely bang on. That's exactly what we wanted. That looks perfect. Um, catch up with the other one. Oh, Sakrak's done the colour swap with Stoker's image too. Uh, it has a bit of a problem with Steps' image because it seems to use light grey as well, not just mid and dark grey unless it's using the wrong palette. Okay, cool. I just need to copy and paste over my fixer order. Ah, okay, so let's have a look at that. So Stoker's is on the other version, isn't it? Um, let's quickly try that and then we'll, we'll go into trying to solve this problem with the other screen. Um, let me quickly grab that from Discord. Stoker colour swap. Go. Let's load that into Fixin again. Okay, cool. Looks good. And so we need to override Stoker's stuff, but it needs to be screen ram first. Right. Yep. Then color ram. And a bit map ram. Cool. Okay. And then we need to. So we've got sacrax right. That's fine. Uh, so let's get Stokers working. And then maybe steps. If you get time, just kind of edit your uh, file a little bit. Um, you should be able to drop it in. Ah, Stokers found the screen copy. Okay. Well, I'll take a look at that code in a minute. Um, I'm just gonna get. This working on the right thing. Let me just get all my windows back on. Just trying to keep an eye on the suggestions window as well. So, uh, and Stoker's works with version two of the game, right? So let's compile that. That in. Oh, hey. hey. He's got it as well. There we go. Perfect. That looks really cool. I like it. So we've got two versions of the game now. Um, I'm going to just put a note next to each one. Uh, version 1. And this needs version 2. Is that right? Version... Yeah, version 1, version 2. Um, yeah, that looks really good. Well done, Sarat. That looks really good. Really, really good. Um, okay, let's have a look. So, Stoker says the screen copies at 9228. So, let's jump to that location. Uh, I really do like this infiltrator. I'm, I'm, I'm loving this this uh, debugger, this uh, disassembler. Uh, I do need to learn the shortcuts for it. 9228 in a leap. He's showing me 928. That that looks like it's something else. This looks like it's doing the um, judging by. Oh, I do shifting left. I don't know what that's doing actually. 
It seems to be multiplying something by 16. Some 16 bit number by 16. Uh, oh, wait, is this. Is this an indirect lookup? 73 and 74. Uh, let me bring it in the debugger so we can see it. And let's go and have a look at 73 and 74. E8, D8. Okay, so look at that in input data. E8, D8. Uh, let's do it in the bitmap mode. Uh, Colour RAM doesn't matter. Let's. Oh, I think that's the letters. Oh, the code is different. Yeah, if you send us a screenshot and drop it into Discord, uh, I can have a look. See what's going on. Because so I've definitely not got that here. But that's a good point. It's probably using indirect lookups to do this. So there probably is. Uh, there probably is some address in here, in zero page, which is doing the this lookup. Just trying to see if I can spot it in here. It's not going to be easy to find though, is it really? Uh, I'd expect it to be around here if it's saving values into this location. I mean, this looks kind of suspicious. The 81F, well, that's color RAM, so it's probably not that. Um, well, what we can do is we can accelerate the game and see what values get read. Um, let's turn that breakpoint off. They're not carried on there. Why is it not carrying on? I've somehow paused it. Um, I don't seem to be able to carry it on. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, uh, yeah. Why am I not seeing that? Okay, I'm going to see if I can find that code. Nine. Yeah, it's doing... That's the colour RAM, isn't it? That it's right into there, and then it's doing the screen RAM rights. Why am I not seeing that? 91FC, that's up here, right? I'm not seeing any of that code. Uh, let's have a look in the debugger here, see if we can see it there. Uh, so, 91FC. No, I've got different code. You might have a different version to the one I've got. They might have. They might have moved some of the code around. So let me hunt for those values specifically. Um, I mean, that's fine. Uh, A9, 0 E, 9D, 50D8. Unknown command. Why is that an unknown command? That's a perfectly valid command. Okay, let's close all these things down. Let's reopen the debugger. Uh, this is the one big problem I have with this debugger is it's not very um, stable. It has lots of issues with it. Oh, I've got to say that background looks amazing. That's a really good job, Stoker. Really, really good job. Unknown command. Um, okay, it's weird. How is that an unknown command? That's a perfectly valid command. Oh, now it works, okay. So apparently you can't use... What? Ah, 
if anybody can explain what the hell's going on here, that would be that would be really good. Well, that works. Nine two oh six. There we go. Let's have a look at nine two oh six. Ah, yeah, there we go. Nine two oh six. So yeah, it's just shifted along slightly in my version. Uh, nine zero nine a. Okay, let's let's open up Infiltrator again and have a look in there. Is that correct? Replace causing steps as well. Okay, let's let's do that quickly. Then we've got all the versions in, and then it's just a matter of finding out where we can store the secondary version. Oops. Um, so steps is. Ah, oh, I've got to say you're on a you're on a form tonight. This Let's drop that in. There we go cool, and then it has yeah. Oops, and we want screen RAM. Oops, that's a GIF. Screen RAM. Yep, base. And we want color RAM. We want bitmap RAM. And we compile cracked version in. Hey, hey, hey. Perfect. Sackrack, you are an absolute star. Thank you very much. This is why a collaborative stream is a wonderful thing. I think it's because in this area here, um, that's a good point actually, they do have a different grey, don't they? I'm not sure how that works, but yeah, it's it's very cool. Dark grey and mid grey, not light grey. Ah, okay, yeah, so you just got the greys muddled up, that's all. Okay, cool. So, what we need to do now is figure out how to replace that secondary map. So we've got the first map in absolutely perfect. Um, yeah. So we just need to get that uh, that secondary secondary map set up. So let's open our vice uh, snapshot again. Um, let's go with the let's go with that one. It doesn't really matter which which one we use, but let's go with that one. Go into the disassembly, slap the font size up. I wish you'd remember that, but it doesn't. Uh, click disassemble. I'm going to here. Uh, there must be a way of jumping to a jump to RAM. There we go. Uh, 909A. So that's. Again, I think you're on a different version there, comp. Um, this looks quite different. Uh, so what did I have in the debugger? I had 9206, 92B5. Oh, so the version I'm using, uh, by the way, in case anybody else wants to do this um, themselves, is the triad version uh, with, with both versions of the game in it. Um, Uh, but I, as I say, when after the stream, I'll load this all to um, uh, to GitHub for you guys to to take a look at. Um, and you know, feel free. Once this is done, um, the imports will be here like this, and you'll be able to. If you want to drop more levels in, you can drop more in. Um, maybe if we get enough levels together, we can maybe write um, some kind of cartridge loader I guess for it where you could pick two levels and it would load in it would load in the two levels that you pick so you'd be presented with a load of levels you can pick from you pick two and then it would load the game with those two that would be a really nice feature and that would be a nice kind of 
a nice change to the normal hacking streams as well. Be, be an interesting thing to take a look at, I think. Um, yeah, maybe maybe we'll do that at some point. Uh, okay, I forgot where I was going to now. Uh, 9206. 9206. So this is what's copying our color RAM. Oh, this is this is actually filling the color RAM. Uh, it looks like it's filling the top half with blue, with a light blue, which would explain this here. Um, how many is it doing? Uh, decrease X. Where's X? Re. Wait, what? That can't be right. Something else must be. It can't be starting at three, surely. One row down, two rows down in fact. Seems to only be drawing three bytes because it's setting X to three here, decreasing. And if it's plus, it's going back to here. <laughs> I wish they'd, I really do wish they'd uh, approve my emote. I really want to show you my, my Shallon uh, emote, my Shallon squint emote, it's very cool. Yeah, we could we could do some really fun stuff with this now. Um, and as as I've shown you the in uh, infiltrate, you can see all the sprites are there. Um, very easy to to go in and edit those as well. If if anybody feels up to just really going to town on the sprites, you can do. Um, I mean, you'd have to have some patience. I think it's quite a lot. I don't, I, I certainly couldn't be doing it. Okay, so one of the great things about this assembler. Um, is if you find so whenever you see an RTS you can pretty much guarantee that the next line if it is a normal assembly language instruction like this this is an entry point to this routine so this block that I've got highlighted here is going to get called um, by some other function and what this assembler does which I think is really nice is it shows you how this is how this has been uh, entered where this has been entered from so we can see here that there is a jump to subroutine 9204 located at this location if I right click that and jump to selection we can see here so now we've got a bunch of routines that it's calling um, I think we can bookmark this somehow I'm not sure how uh, there we go set bookmark okay so set bookmark empty no or do I have to do it like that set bookmark yeah there we go so now I've put like mark this location. So now we can go through each of these and we can see what they're doing. So because that looks like it's some kind of setup code. So if I jump back to that bookmark again, this looks like it's doing some kind of setup. So it's setting these two values here, which are some kind of VIC values. I can't remember exactly what they are because I tend to use labels. Uh, they are uh, the raster interrupt uh, control and the interrupt status control so yeah interrupt status and interrupt control so this is some kind of reset this is what's setting everything up here in fact yeah you can see uh i can see where the interrupt is so the interrupt is at 94 fe and i'm guessing it's that interrupt that starts drawing everything here um yeah this entire routine looks like the startup routine so let's go through what each of these jumps is doing um, and maybe we can find out what's actually happening there. So let me turn all the code back on. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Uh, you can just and have all that stuff marked. You mean all the all the jump labels where they come from and stuff? Or, or do you mean? I don't know what you mean by labels in in. I, see, I need to use Quarter. I need to have a look at it and see what it's doing. Uh, Okay, so this is putting the value 0 into 16 locations starting at 0, 2. Um, and then it's also storing them in these few locations. So the background is set to, the border is set to black here as well. Um, so that's a little setup. This looks like some kind of entry point. Oh, thanks for the host hitch. Appreciated. Lurking whilst you VR. What are you playing in VR at the moment, Hitch? You playing No Man's Sky? 
I'm I'm really addicted to that again. It's kind of it's a bit worrying. Uh, okay, let's jump to this other location. There's some wipeout. Oh, wipeout! I, I must admit that looks really really good. I should get a PSVR actually. I've got a PlayStation Pro. Should get it. Uh, but yeah, no man, no man's sky. I'm really enjoying. It's one of the few games, um, uh, one of the few gaming companies that has actually consistently updated their product without asking for another penny off anybody. And I think that's really cool. There's a lot of studios could learn from that, uh, but unfortunately, I don't think they ever will. So, um, okay, so we've got some kind of copy going on here. Uh, it's copying... Actually, this could be it. So, this image was 256 pixels across. Which means... Uh, is this alright? 250... Yeah, 256 pixels across. Which means it's 256 bytes to draw one row of characters because each each character is 8 bytes and uh, it's 8 pixels wide. That's 256 along, so that's 32 times 8, 256. So each one of these rows is 256 bytes, so it fits perfectly into a loop like this. Uh, you can see here the X is being initialized with 0. And we're increasing all the way until it becomes zero again, because we're, we're branching if it's not zero. And you'll notice here that these are not exactly 256 bytes apart. They're actually 256 bytes plus an extra, what's that, 4, 14, yeah, 4, an extra 64. And we've already said that there's 32 bytes on this side and 32 bytes on this side, which is 64. But actually, this looks very much like the bitmap data. So I'm going to try. Okay, good night, Andy. Yeah, Hitch, they did. Well, the thing is, I feel sorry for them because I think that the game they've got now is the game they wanted to release. And I think Sony forced them, forced their hand a little bit um, by giving them a shitload of money and saying, right, you're our bitch now. You need to, you need to release this when we say. And Sony looked and went, well, this is good enough, release it. It's a shame, really, because uh, I think it's given them a bit of a bad name, uh, which they probably don't deserve. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at this. This definitely does seem to be loading it in, and these are always 256 bytes because of this loop, and they're also always 64 apart. But I feel like I feel like this is where we should be storing um, something. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this location first. I'm gonna try storing it in this location, and if that doesn't work, I'm gonna try in this location. I'm gonna store it in this one first because this is loading stuff. Um, I'll try it in this one second because it could be that this is the one part. Of it. Yeah, see, we've got another swap here. It's happening again here, so there's another version of it here. Um, that again is doing the same sort of thing, so... This is a very interesting area of the code, so... Let's go through these addresses and let's drop some, some of these... Uh, some of these maps into these locations, so let's, let's stick with uh, Steps' map. And let's change... Let's just copy this. Uh, to here. So we're going to do this twice. We're going to do it once at the location where it's been loaded in, but then we're going to do it again at this location. Um, do we need to add 32 this time? No. Uh, but what we do need to do... We are going to copy 15 rows. There's one, hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is just the bottom area. This is just the bottom area. So maybe it's getting the top and bottom from two different places. 
So it's loaded from 7 1, B0, and A6. A6 to B0 looks like it could be. This looks like it could be one section. And this could be. I don't know what that is. We'll come back to that. The 64 apart is because it's leaving a gap for the pillars, I think. Because they're 256 long and they're 64 apart. So I think that 64 is the pillars on either side. Um, and I think the 256 is the bit in the middle. And the fact that these are covered, there's, so if we look at this, there's two things. These are consecutive. See this A6 to AF and then it goes B0 and you'll see that they go up uh, this, the, the upper kind of bite, the most significant bite goes up by 256 every time. But then it also adds on uh, 4 zero, adds on 64 each time, which is th those pillars. So you see here, if you increase that, it goes to B0. And then you add the 4 zero into this, so B0, BA. And that's this here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 rows there. 1, 2, 3, 4 five six seven eight rows here interesting okay let's let's use that address a6 ba so we're going to put the bitmap data in here um it's interesting how it's even the data it's loading in is four apart so maybe we don't need to maybe we do need to include that 32 there and we actually need to take, no, no, we don't. We need to take that off. Yeah, like that. Okay, let's give that a try. I'm not sure what is, this is going to do, but um, can't hurt to give it a try. So what we're expecting is something different in this area. that come weird something's gone weird here now it's some of the code has stopped running could this be because a6 okay so we're starting at this location we're adding our row in times 320 because we need to advance by 256 plus 64 each time which we've already established here um, we don't need to add that on, that's what it is. That's, that's what it is, because here we're accounting, here we're actually drawing directly into screen, screen space, into the bitmap space. Here we're actually storing the data, so, um, this is the location of the start of the data, not the start of the screen area. So I think that should be fine there. Give that a try. It's a good point because if the game crashes like that, then we can pretty much guarantee it's in the wrong place. So if we can get the game to run and it not crash, then that would be a good sign. Okay, so we're on. Let's uh, give it a speed up. I'm so glad this game has got a demo mode. Makes this so much easier. Okay, so no, okay. That's exactly the same, isn't it? It hasn't changed a thing. Um, okay. So the other thing is is here it's copying into this location, but here it's going the other way. Um I wonder if it's using some of this area as kind of as a backup because it's going to have to use a, an area of memory for transferring so maybe that's what it's doing here let's try changing that to that location I've done that wrong is 
729F. Where am I writing to that? Is that the copy in the bottom half of the screen? I think that might be copying the bottom half of the screen actually. We need more loops like this. This is definitely the right thing. Um, I, just, I wonder if there's any indirect stuff like this because I do see a lot of it in here so they're not adverse to using it. Um, I wonder if they've used it as a kind of speed up for these things. Uh, background change. I, I'm, I feel like these memory addresses here need looking at so I'm gonna open up the hex editor. Can I make that bigger? I don't know I can't unfortunately. Okay so seven Oh, I don't like the hex editor in there. I'm going to open the disassembler. I think the disassembler is a much better hex editor. So seven, seven, seven. What was it? Seven, seven, five, seven, 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 eight. That whole area seems to be the temporary memory stuff. So seven, five points to pretty much nothing. Uh, seven, seven points to six to eighty which would be this screen or at least part of this screen but so that's interesting uh, let's speed it up and see what happens when it starts overwriting oh, I gotta say that's that's a really good background I like that it works so well so much better than the backgrounds they gave us as well. I think they were so desperate to put Maria Whitaker in the game that um, they for forgo any kind of decent design in the background. Okay, so we're going to look at this area here, see if things start changing. Okay, so we've got B302, 78E0, 0. that's kind of a weird location, that's in the sprite space. That's not. Uh, okay, none of this looks. These are the numbers that are changing. Um, that's where it's writing to. I think that's where it's writing from. A6. But I think we had it right with our original. I think we had it right with that. But for some reason it's not it's not reading it properly so okay what we can do here um, we can go and have a look at that area of memory in here and then we can just fill if that area of memory looks suspiciously like it might contain the sort of information we're after um, then we can just fill it with some some blanks it looks black here Could that just be, yeah, could that be the the black kind of highlight thing? I'm trying to think where it might be swapping it to. Let's start it again and accelerate. There's definitely something to do with these values around here, so let's accelerate through. I hope you guys are finding this uh, interesting. It's been a bit of a different one tonight. It's been more about kind of patching. Uh, a game, but it's always good to see um, the kind of thought process when you, you're trying to discover these um, these hacks. And it's as much a learning process for me as it is anybody else as well. I, I, I don't do this very often, if at all. I've certainly never done this with Barbarian. Um, so I was a bit worried about it tonight. I was a bit unsure whether we'd be able to do it or not. And I know people had spent some time drawing um, artwork. So I'm glad that uh, Sackcrack helped us to get these um, backdrops in. It's really, really cool that we can see those. Okay, I'm going to slow it down as it starts. And pause it right. So, yeah, let's see. Look, 70, 75 has D700. Now, that's 
in a different place to our RAM. And then this has this kind of weird location, uh, but a bit further down the screen. So I wonder if this is kind of, this is the temporary area. And actually it's the D, D0 area that is, is our map area. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try being a bit strange and uh, copying the code above, but I'm just going to stick it at D0. Um, just to see what happens. And then if this doesn't work, I'm going to, uh, oh, why is that blocking it? Uh, got named, it overlaps. Oh, because we've got color RAM here. Okay, so let's take those extra rows out. And let's take... Let's take that down to 256. Let's, let's do a straightforward drop the data into here. Um, I mean, we could just import the binary at that location, but that'll do for now. Uh, why is that not working now? Uh, let me block... How big is that bit? How big is bitmap data? Let's have a look. That's the steps map. Okay, uh, let's check that out. Uh, 4K. That should be fine. 4096 bytes. So that's. Oh, actually, is that going to. I should just go to D. No. D4, D8. No, that's too big, isn't it? It's too big. It's not going to fit. That fills the entire RAM up. Okay, let's let's load the, the the infiltrator up again. So this snapshot, if I remember rightly, I just need loads of snapshot up in here. Uh, good night, Amok. Thank you for joining the stream. And yeah, see you for Saturday. We'll uh, we'll get some design stuff down on Saturday. We'll we'll have a real good look at um, how we're going to plan the game out. There's definitely, there is definitely graphics in this location, the D0. Um, but why is it, why is the screen map so big? Let me do some calculations, just need to make sure. So our screen is 256 uh, by 120. Oops, 256 by 120. So that's how many pixels it is. Um, in high res mode but that's not how many bytes it is so every every eight pixels or four pixels in multicolor mode takes up a single byte so we can divide that by eight that gives us 3840 uh which in hexadecimal is f00 so that means wherever it is it seems to be taking up more more of the map than more of the, the kind of memory than we think. Hmm. So wherever it's wherever it goes, so this is to D F forty, yeah, you see it comes all the way down here. But then Oh, because this is underneath. Oh shit, yeah, this is Okay, this is getting kind of complicated now. So, our color RAM that we that we set here, we're loading it in underneath ROM, and then using this loop to load it on top of ROM. But it's also this location is actually where this bitmap is. So I think we need to locate this somewhere else. We need to find another location to stick the color RAM data. Um. Oh, shit, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. I mean, it's gonna make this a little bit simpler, um, but we're gonna have to find 4K, uh, sorry, 1K of memory somewhere to put that. So we'll do that in a minute. Um, and now let's just turn the colors off and just build uh, and see what we get. This is a very very interesting uh, game to to play around in. I've gotta say. 
Okay, so the colours are wrong, we know that. Um, the colours... Actually, the colours in this area don't look too bad, but that's because it's it's redrawing uh, the colours in that player area, so we know that's fine. Um, but hopefully when this round finishes, we should see something resembling this in the next one. So, aha, there we go. So that is the location. At least it's the location. It is the location because I can see up there. Can you see the the correct things are there? So we need to put the colours somewhere else. Okay. We're getting somewhere now. We're getting somewhere. Okay, so we can't use the colour RAM location for loading the colour RAM data in. We need to find somewhere else that's that's unused for that. Uh, this is where the disassembler comes in very useful because we can just quickly scan through uh, for unused memory. Uh, so first of all, if we look at the sprites uh, in here, we know we can't put anything in the sprite areas, which leads all the way up to I think it was five FF, six to six FF is the the current screen. I would think up to here. So it needs to be kind of in the upper half of, of RAM somewhere. Um, so let's jump to 8000, which I know is where all the code starts, so it can't be here. So we're looking for a kind of relatively blank area um, that we can load the, the color RAM into. We need one kilobyte, so um, four pages of memory. Because I think all these are tables. So they're definitely being read. So anything that's got colours on we can't use because they're they're being read. Um This looks interesting. Let's see what's going on here if I restart. Uh, things are being read from close by, so that's probably no good. Uh nothing's happening down this area. Stuff is being read here though. Okay. Oh, let's check what mode we're in. So we're in we're in 35 on the on the processor stack. So let me just check. I believe that means both are open, so I don't think we can do anything there. Check uh, so five would be one zero one. Yeah, so yeah, RAM is open in both locations, so we can't use that uh, without confirming that it's not being used at all in the game. And for some reason, it's crashed. I think because I pressed something up there. Uh, okay. Look, cracked version in again. Bring my bring my chat back. How is the zero page? Um, it does seem to be used quite a bit. I'll go back and have a look at it in a, in a few minutes. I'm just gonna try and find uh, somewhere to, to paste this. So you see all these reads that happen in here. I think these are tables. I think what it's doing is it's looking at the pixels in the background, looking looking them up in a table and referencing them with the pixels that it wants to draw over the top to create a new byte for that area rather than kind of perform uh, logic on the fly it's, it's using some kind of lookup table to make it easier see this looks interesting there are some things changing but these are vic registers so these are likely to change and we can't use this area because we know the bitmap's going to be here um, so there's this location here, which seems to be flashing a lot, um, from DF, see this looks like code as well, let's jump to that, E00, oh it's not though, but there is stuff being read here, so we've got to be careful, can't use that, uh, there's more stuff being read here, it's not looking like there's an awful lot of space to do this. Uh, 
Yeah, there's some kind of graphics data here. You can see on the side. Um, this looks. This location looks interesting, but I, I'm not entirely convinced that this is free to use. I don't know what it is that's in here. Um, well, actually, we can fill it if we fill F800 to FC100 with zero. Let's see what happens. So I filled that with blanks now. Um, let's see if the game just keeps going. Nothing fails. Seems fine. Seems to be. Seems to be working. It's created. I'm not sure if that's how it was before, but there's. Let's try it. Let's let's try putting the colours there. We can always move them if it's incorrect. So let's try putting them at uh, F eight hundred, um, and then. Yeah, was that right? Seven. That's only doing seven rows. Oh, because it only needs to do seven rows. The problem is this bit, isn't it? That's. Oh man, this is awkward. So. So we were putting there, this is our overwrite, so this is where we overwrite the colour with our colour for our new map. And this is where we load in these colour and grabs. So I'm going to do a similar thing to this uh, because we need to make these a little bit more uh, unique. So at the moment these are loading the entire D0 to DFFF or whatever it is. And we need to change this. We instead just load um, into this location. Uh, just hard the last half of these. So it would be fill uh, 800 it would be screen and data dot get hundred plus i okay I need to do that with part one as well okay I'm not convinced by this but let's give it a try uh Screen RAM data is already defined. Okay, it's quite two. It's quite one. We can but try. There's always undo. There was a very weird sound when that started. I think I may have destroyed the music. Isn't there usually music at this point? I don't know if I've got my desktop audio open. Yeah, I've killed the music. Uh, okay, so that's not a good location to use. Fair enough. Let's have a look what else we can do. Uh, so let's undo those changes because they're a bit scary. So the problem is, is we need to load our bitmap in at this location um, in order for it to be displayed as the second map. But we also need the colours. So we need, we do need to find, we need to find 4K of memory. No, sorry. What do we need? We need 1k, sorry, yeah. Four pages, that's right. Okay, let's close 
and a turn. So this location is no good because this seems to be the music routine. Um, but why it didn't show up as being used, I don't know. So let's go and have a look. At, uh, let's go and have a look from zero page onwards. See if we can find uh, some area. So, yep, zero page is definitely being used. Look how busy that is there. This is stack area, so we can't use this. Um, I mean, to be fair, there's only one page here anyway, but the top of the stacks. You know, being hammered all the time. So st the, the stack on the C64 uh, runs from the top, so from here basically down, um, with the with the oldest value on the stack being here and the newest one being whatever the active thing here is, according to the stack pointer, which is here. Um, uh, two zero is sometimes a good place to use. I th believe it's like a tape buffer. Um, they're using it already though by the looks of things. 3-0. Yeah. Ah, actually we've got got screen RAM location here, the original screen RAM location, but even this is being used. Look, it's being written to all over the show. And then we've got all our animations which are constantly being used. That's no good. Oh, this is a bit of a quandary. How do we how do we do this? Is this a case of um, having to pack this in a way that that means it, it writes to the correct locations as part of the unpack process? I think it probably is. Uh, what's this location? Four seven hundred onwards. Four seven. This is an interesting area. Four four hundred to four eight hundred. Check that's not our bitmap. Uh, oh, that's our color RAM, isn't it? Damn it. Our screen RAM. We can't use that area either because uh, we're already loading in uh, here for that. We can't can't use that either, unfortunately. Okay, so that, that rules out that area. Um, Thank you for the follow, Eva301, and welcome to the stream. Yeah, so Stoker, if you look at um, D000 um, in in bitmap mode in Infiltrator, you can see this this block here. And if you look closely, you can kind of so this was the um, this was Sacrax map. Um, and you can see some of the some of the features of Sacrap's map in here. I mean, the colours are wrong, um, but if you play around with the colours, you can actually find things in here. Uh, I was trying to find the the one that actually showed it up the best last time. Um, but there's definitely this is definitely map data. And when I put the map into this location and, and remove the colours, um, we get. Uh, to, to, we do get we do get it working properly uh i work with nintendo no i don't um unfortunately no this is uh commodore 64. um we're looking at a, a classic uh a classic commodore 64 and on many other platforms as well a game called barbarian um and we do this so every, every thursday we uh we take a, an existing game we look at how it works uh, we try and pull it apart. We try and Im improve it in some cases. In in this case, what we're trying to do is add new backgrounds into it. Um, so that's our that's our goal today is to add new backgrounds into into Barbarian and understand how it works. Um, so we've got a couple of backgrounds that have been donated by the community, and we're just kind of working on figuring those out. We've managed to get the first map in, um, but when it switches between uh, this this level and the next level, uh, which I'll speed up. I'll show you. The the second one isn't loading in correctly, uh, so we just need to figure out where where we can put that. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the stream. Um, hopefully you find this this interesting. We do have another stream on Saturday where we we work together to make a game for the Commodore 64. Um, if you're interested in that sort of thing. So yeah, it's, it's this background is wrong. 
But if I if see this is the thing if I if I put this in here um, and I remove the color from here, we get incorrect colors in the rest of it, but we get the correct map on the second second screen second screen. So you'll be able to see, but none of that map was correct. It was all incorrect. Um, keep calling it map. It's a back backdrop. So again, all the colours around here are wrong, because all, all this was relying on this being imported in. Um, and now that's not being imported in properly, it's incorrect. Um, but, if we speed this up... Yeah, it is three hours, we're going to have to call this a day soon, guys. Although I don't have work tomorrow, so I might do another half an hour or so. Um, so you see, this is going to change now, but the second map will be exactly the same. There we go. And we've got a bit of distortion down here, but um, I can still see the same pattern up here. The colours are different, uh, because I think it's loading the colours from somewhere else now. Um, but the, the actual kind of play area here is correct, and I can see the school shapes in the colours here. Um, it's not even 4K for it, it's 1K that we need. Um, well, we might need a little bit more for um, uh, for, for colour data, but it, it shouldn't be that much. Uh, but Oh no, we do need 4K, we need... Hang on, let me get this right. No, we've got 4K for this bitmap, it's just under 4K actually. We need 1K to store the color RAM data. And we'll need another 1K to store the screen RAM data somewhere. Um, but I think if we can get the color RAM in, I think it's going to make a huge difference to what we're looking at. So this is all sprite data. It has to be around here somewhere. We've got to find some. So 6,000, this is actual screen data. It can't be that. Wait a minute. So we had, we had our location. Uh, let me remember where it was now. Nine two. Oh God, where was it now? Oh, we had a bookmark, didn't we? Jump to bookmark. There we go. And then it was this one, wasn't it? There we go. Jump to selection. Uh, where was it? We had like a, a temporary copy area um, where things were being copied to and from. Uh, and I reckon. I reckon we can use that. I can't remember what the number was now, damn it. Yeah, here we go. So we had this temporary area that was around here that it was turning black after a while. I think we can use this location because this does stretch on for quite a while so if I just set it to A7 here well let's do it at A8 let's make it nice and neat so if we change that to A8 and we change uh, this to A8 and then do um, our load binary thing and fill uh, Let's call that one, or we'll call that two, actually. So again, fill this many bytes. Because uh, we're actually taking, yeah, taking the whole area, B0. There's a B0, yeah, this should be all right, I think. 
because it's only going to happen once. It's going to happen in this routine at the beginning. Then once it's copied into the correct location, this is literally because we're trying to we're trying to load stuff under the I/O RAM. So we just need to solve that problem. And I think that this area is a temporary buffer for when the screen goes black and rebuilds. Um, so this might be the right place to put it. Um, so okay, so we want uh, screen RAM data two. Get eight hundred plus I, uh, and then we'll copy that and do it for the other one with the one. One or one. So that's going from A eight hundred to B zero zero, and that's in this segment, so that's fine. This is going A eight hundred to B zero zero, so that's fine. So the only thing we need to do is change this. Eight hundred. Yeah. So I've changed that, and then change these to self modify slightly differently. Increase both. We'll check number two. Should be fine. Eight. B. All right. Let's give that a shot. You can only go wrong, right? But we'll see. Okay, good. We've got colours. Nothing's gone wrong. But let's give that an accelerate. Okay, that's worked. So all we need to do now is find where this top row of colours is stored. Hey, cool. Right. <laughs> I'm feeling I'm feeling good about this now. Right, I'm going to take a five minute break, uh, and then when we come back, we'll solve the problem of the top colours. And because I've not got work in the morning, I'm not leaving until these colours are done. So back in five minutes, guys, and let's get this nailed once and for all. Be right back. Right, let's do this. So, I think the easiest way to figure out where the colours are coming from is to hunt, uh, to put a breakpoint in um, and have a look where they're being drawn to. So the screen colours start at 4400. So what we're actually interested in is this location here. So that is four across, seven down. So. We want four four hundred plus seven times times twenty eight plus four. What? One one eight, right? Plus four gives. No, it doesn't. Where is it coming up with these values from? Seven times twenty eight, right? Seven rows. Is 118 in hex plus 4 would be 11c, so we want 451c. So that's the value we're looking for. 451c, 451c. Right, so 451c. Whenever that is written to, we want to we want to break on it and see where that's actually happening. So let's accelerate through this. Oh. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm glad I've not got work tomorrow. I apologise if anybody has got work. Oh, Stoker has got work. <laughs> yeah, going well. We're so close as well. So, so we should see one right. So this is where it's writing. Th Oops, this is where it's writing black. A F A five. Okay, I'm gonna actually look at this in Infiltrator though, because it's just a bit easier to, to read it in here. Close this one down. Uh, so that is FA5. That's okay. So it is using these pages by the looks of things. So I'm going to go and have a look in those memory addresses. So 77. 
is the location, is the, is the destination. 75 is the, is the source. Uh, so... Yeah, so there's our destination, 451C, and here's the source, E11C. E11C, okay. Uh, which maps perfectly. So if E... If the color RAM starts E00, sorry, screen RAM starts at E000, it's mapping perfectly to this. Um, so I'm going to try. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because they've got... Because they've got the bitmap at D, it would make sense, yeah. I think Sakrak's right. I think it is going to be in that location. So, um, at the moment, what we're doing here, right? So, this is this is our second bitmap. So, let's move this down to here and call this map 2. Uh, and let's copy screen RAM data. Stick that in E00. And let's copy color RAM data. And put that in E F E four. Sorry, I think he's right. I think that's probably going to be right. Uh, welcome to the stream, Jacob. Good to see you again. Um, no, the stream is still on. We've we've got we're very close to getting the maps in into Barbarian exactly as we want them. So um, I'll let you in on the progress. So so far we've managed to get one map and all its colours correct, as you will see when we load up. Um, so we've got a new new background, all the colours are correct, everything's working fine. The problem is, is when the screen switch, we were getting uh, some inconsistencies, but you may have just joined at the right time, because you may see the first time our cut, uh, why is that not accelerating? Um, you may see that when the screen changes, if it looks exactly the same, it's worked. Um, if we see any corruption, it hasn't worked, so let's have a look what goes on, blah blah blah. We've done it. There we go. So, with that, with that in in place, what we can do now, we'll call this bitmap data one, screen data one, full data one, bitmap data two, screen data two, like so. Um, I believe Stoker's. Hang on, which version are we on here? We're on version two. Okay, so let's add both maps in. And let's do this. I think now we should get both maps in. Everything's gone well. Hi, coconut. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, we're uh, we're we're changing the uh, backgrounds in in. Um... Oh, where's that not worked? Oh, because I'm already using those values up here. Um, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna call it A. I'm just gonna be lazy. We we'll probably rename those to something different, but um, that should work. Um, yeah, we're putting new backgrounds into Barbarian, so hopefully this is the first time we're going to have both backgrounds changed in the game, if it's worked. Okay, so we've got uh, Stoker's background in. Accelerate through this. Oh, hey, what do you know? What do you know? We've uh, we've done it. So this is the version two, um, and so now we what we need to do. I'm gonna wrap this uh, in, in this code uh, like so, and we'll put an else here. And I'm going to copy this into here for version one. Um, we're going to have to duplicate uh, Sakrak's map because Sakrak's map um, is the only one for for this version. So we'll make it the first one that loads. Um, so what we can either do is uh, only show map two. In fact, let's try that. Actually, let's uh, let's do uh, yeah. Let's do an if version two round here for now. Uh, maybe we can get another map at some point. But for now, this should be enough to 
only show that map on on that level uh, and just comment that bit out there right so that's version 2 working so let's see if version 1 works um, let's close that Okay, we've got an error. Oh, because I've got a space when I shouldn't have a space. There we go. So this is definitely one of the more complicated uh, patches that we've done. Hi, really thirds. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. And now this... Oh, have I just loaded the... Oh, no. There we go. And now we've got that background. And hopefully when, when this finishes it should go to whatever the second map is which I think is the trees isn't it which I think is the better of the two maps anyway better than the original kind of weird clearing in a volcano or whatever it was excellent that was actually a lot quicker than I thought so that's I'm 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 pleased with that. That's really good. Yeah, we did get it all done in one stream. We managed to put three backgrounds into two different versions of the game um, in one stream, um, and make it in one block of code. So all you have to do is 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 very first line of code. Come up here, change it to version one and version two, and then when you build it, your your bin folder will have a crack.prg for the folder here. We can even in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this here now. So I'm going to put that in there like that. And I put that in there like that. I'm going to call this uh, Barbarian uh, 1. I'm going to call this one. Oh, that's Barbarian 2, but I uh, call that one Barbarian uh, 2. No. So now it will build whichever version we tell it to build and it will label it correctly in here so we've got Barbarian 2 here now <laughs> before you finish giving jetpacks and laser guns yeah <laughs> um, but yeah it seems to be working and the, the graphics are all in pretty perfect um, I'm very pleased with that Yeah, see, this is the only problem with this, is that you can't really change the colour of the characters. Oh, there's something weird going on with the head there. Or is it... Oh, no, no, it's just because there's some pink on the ground here. It looked like it looked like they'd broken apart, but they look fine. Um, I'm going to put it on Accelerate for a bit, just to make sure that it is fine and there's nothing else going on. Um... Yeah, I mean it's looking it's looking like it's working pretty good. Nothing else seems to be broken. There's some weird colours up here. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what that's about. But it's a minor problem. I think we can live with. Let's load it up again. See what happens. That's fine on that one. Same. Let's try it on this version. Oh, it's different on this one because they, they've got these trees in the background. Um, so you can't, it's not doing the same thing up here. Uh, let me accelerate it a little bit. Oh, they're in the original. Okay, well, we can check that actually if we... Um, we just load in, which is version 2. Okay. And SVS. Oops. Oh yeah, they are. They're there. Although this has got the wrong colours in there because of the weird, uh, the weird loading. Let me load it in from the the crack file. Uh, let's see, Barbarian version one. Okay. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, version two. Sorry. Uh, two. Oh yeah, you're right. No, they are wrong up here. That's really weird. You'd think they'd fix that. I mean, should we fix that? I think we should, actually. Uh, 
Um, how would you fix that actually? Thinking about it. Yeah, maybe it's intentional. Maybe it's like a highlight. Or schools, yeah. Could be schools, I guess. They do have a kind of black hole in them, don't they? Um. Oh! What's this background? Is this... Oh, it's because we've replaced it, that's why. Panicking then, I thought there was a third background that we hadn't seen. But there is just two. Yeah, just two, okay. Yeah, they're schools, aren't they? I think because on this level, on this screen, it kind of fits more. Um, so they obviously, I think they drew this screen first and drew the pillars. And then on this screen, it just feels, you know, they could have maybe extended the schools a little bit here. Uh, but uh, it's all thing, I guess. Um, cool. Um, I don't think there's much more we can do on this actually. I think we're we're pretty much done with it. Um, it's a shame. I was kind of enjoying that. I wanted to do a bit more. Um, I think I'm actually going to copy Sakrax level in twice because why not? Um, it's it's much better than the original anyway, so. Oh yeah, we could change the armor color. Uh, yeah, let's do that actually. Uh, so there's a sprite. Yeah, let's do that. So let me just check that uh, Sakrax version is working uh, with both maps. Why does that not put it in on that one? That's weird. Did I actually compile it? Oh, because I did this here. So I'm gonna remove that, that's why. I realise I don't have the sound playing for you guys, but I've heard that duh, 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 about 20 times now. Hopefully it'll just keep you playing this map over and over again. Yeah, there we go. Better than the other maps anyway. Um, but if you wanna, if you wanna remove that, just do that. Basically, just block block this uh, conditional compile code out. Uh, yeah, just just re-enable the condition there, and it should should block it out. But I'll leave it in for now. Um, and if you want to make these maps, um, I'll. I'll just quickly go through how they work again. So um, the, the colors are detailed. Um, the, the colors are detailed on, on the Twitter post. Uh, there's a link in my Discord to that. Let me drop a Discord link in here. Um, I don't think I have a Twitter link on here. I'll try. might have a Twitter. Oh, I do. There you go. Um, so the, the, the colour format is detailed on there. There is some colour switching that has to be done. If you ask in my uh, Discord channel, if you're having problems, uh, Sakrat can probably uh, let you know how to switch the colours over or which colours need switching. Um, and then you just need to export uh, bitmap data, colour RAM data and screen RAM data. Now you can do it in Pixen. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do this any, in any other uh, tool as well. Uh, but in here it's as simple as going into save and then just pick in screen RAM, color RAM, bitmap RAM. Um, they've got the same endings in here so you'll know it's SCR, COL, MAP. Um, it's really obvious to do. Um, uh, 
Um, okay, so let's let's have a quick look in the debugger. Let's load up. Um, let's load up this into the debugger. Of course, the debugger doesn't want to load it properly, so let's just close everything else down. Open a fresh debugger. What we can even do as well, I'll show you what we've got in uh, a crack folder. So there is this disk image, and this disk image has two versions of Barbarian on it here. Now, I wonder if it's got some kind of option screen on it, because uh, if it has, we can just piggyback on that. No, that just loaded straight in, didn't it? Um, there are some versions of this that do have uh, selectors, so you can select between the versions. I thought this might be one of them, but it's not. Um, so we, we could just uh, piggyback on one of those. But I mean, for now, I, what, what I'm going to do when we're finished, uh, I'm going to compile both versions. I'm going to drop these versions into the root of the folder. Um, I, I might make a, like a release folder in here and just drop them drop them into there. Um, so if you, if you don't want to mess around compiling, you can just try them out immediately. Um, they should run automatically. They're just PRGs. Um, so they should just run automatically. Um, otherwise, you can compile it yourself. And I'll, I'll upload the whole thing to, to GitHub so um, you can have a play around with it. Um, all right, let's, let's do this then. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our version, uh, which we're going to load... And then we're going to find out, whoops, we're going to find out where this guy's uh, vest is being stored. So, easiest way to do that is looking in Vikram. This seems to be the sprite that's being used for the vest, which is sprite 7. I don't think it changes at any point. It's always sprite 7. So, the color we're looking for there is uh, D027 plus 7. So, it's D02E. So, we're looking for D02E in memory. And there's one location with it, so we can pretty much say that that is going to be our location. Uh, let's go to that, E6AA. We have to take one away so that we get the actual instruction. Oh, interesting. This is just incrementing that value. So maybe it's not setting it. Maybe it's setting them all in a row like that. Let's check 979F. 997, oops. 979E. Okay, so it's loading the values from 29, which is here. Uh, which would be this one. So I think if I change that value there, his vest should change color. If I change that to... Why is that not... I think I might need to pause it. It's writing very quickly to the... I think it might be overriding it, actually. So I think even if we change it, something's going to change it back. Oh, no. It's kept it. Okay, so let's accelerate through. Something will be writing to this memory address, so we need to find out where that's been written to. It's not changing its color, though. Okay, let's look for let's look for memory rights to that location. So we're looking for zero page store accumulator. So let me grab the opcode list. How is that gone? Codes, there we go. Uh, store accumulator zero page is eight five. Uh, and the location is three zero. 
There we go, CB41. I have a funny feeling that's going to be some kind of data location though, but uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, this looks like data actually. Um, okay, maybe it's writing all the memory addresses in a row. So it would be store accumulated Z index. Store accumulated zero page index, which is 95. And it would start at 28. It's not that, okay. Uh, I see, and it's gone. It's gone back to three again. Okay, that's fine. We can do a breakpoint. So let's have a look. See what's actually writing to that address. Zero zero three zero. Anytime it changes, let's break. Okay. F zero eight. F zero eight keeps jumping to that location. Ah, there we go. Uh, so load X. With A3, let's store it at 20. Uh, so load accumulate C771, comma X, okay. C771. It's going to be that one, isn't it? It's got to be that one. Hey, there we go. Okay, let's turn our breakpoint off. So the question is, what colour do we want his vest? That's the next colour. Uh, that's the next question. You guys pick a colour. I will. I will drop that in. Uh, so C seven seven five. And let's do a different colour for each one. Actually, let's let's be let's be fancy about this. So this is uh, version two. We're on version. We're actually looking at version one now. Um, C seven seven five. Let's make that. Uh, well, we'll do. We'll do yellow on the other version. On the uh, on the version two. This is version one. Uh, so let's pick another color. Um, so we're using pink, grey, brown, so we need quite a bright colour that it stands out. Uh, purple maybe? Nah, it's too, too dull. Uh, orange is going to look too dark, brown is going to blend in. And then we've got greys, then we've got light green as well. It's, uh, it's a bit gaudy, light blue. Oh, light blue's nice actually. Yeah, what does green look like? Oh, green's quite nice as well actually. Maybe we'll do green on, on this one, and we'll do light blue on the other one. We'll do light blue on that one. Okay. Sorry, green on this one light blue on that one. Yeah, I tried the yellow. The yellow the yellow did look nice, but I'm I'm not sure. Right, what what do you think looks best? Let's have a look. So So yellow green or light blue. Actually light blue kind of clashes with the sky a little bit on this one, doesn't it? So it needs to be yellow or green on this one. Let's have a look again. Yellow, green. I think yellow actually on this one. Nice, nice and stands out a lot. I think. You think? Rather than the rather than yellow. Let's check the green again. Hmm. I can't decide. You know, what, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with yellow on this one. I think it's just a little bit brighter. Let's have a look at the version two. Oh, I need 
need to do it in the debugger, don't I? Uh, okay. It's a hard reset. Two in. I can run. Okay, so for some reason that's not picked up this time, which is interesting. That is interesting. That seems to have. It seems to be different on version two. Oops. Nine zero seven four. Oh, there seems to be some slight differences in the code between these two versions, which kind of makes sense because one they were released by different publishers. So, um, and this could be why we're seeing uh, you guys are finding different. Uh, locations to me so this is version 2 so we need to change need to change this location here um, so we're looking in 9074 so I'm gonna go to 9074 and this time it's loading from C8DB which is up here and it's that one there C8DF by the looks of things so let's change that to c 8 so we don't cause any crashes and let's have a look what what colors suit him so we had what do we have on the other one yellow okay so let's have a look at uh, light green and turn the bright point off go Is it a different background for the for the boss enemy, or is it just does it just pick one of these? Is it just whatever one you you get to? Okay, I'm not sure about light green. I think it's a bit too bright. Uh, that's nice though. I do like that green. Let's go with that. Let's let's go with that one. Kind of fits a little better as well. Yeah, let, let's go with let's go with a green on that one. Cool. All right. And so I'm going to compile these two versions now. I'm going to stick it in the folder, and I think that's we'll call it a night there. I think. Um, just double check everything's working. Barbarian part two. I'm going to create a folder, call it release, and put that in here. And I'll drop this this folder straight into um, GitHub as soon as we've finished with the stream in a few minutes. Um, and then I'll, I'll trim this video down and stick it on YouTube tomorrow as well. The VOD will be available uh, straight away. For those waiting on the PDF, by the way, from the, uh, the game stuff, uh, it's it's still ongoing. I've got tomorrow off, so I'm going to spend a bit more time on it. Um, it's going to be quite a long one. It's up to about 35 pages now, and there's still a fair little fair bit to do in it. So it's going to be the biggest one yet. Um, we're probably looking in the region of 40 plus pages. It might even get to 50 um, uh, because there's a lot a lot of new stuff um explained in there and i've gone into a bit more detail about uh shifting bits in uh shifting 16-bit values as well um because i think that was quite a useful thing to to explain um so rest assured it is coming it's just taking its time because i've had a lot of other things on plus i actually lost my progress i have a i have a folder here um where i keep the code as if i'd been following the write-ups um, and I actually deleted this folder by mistake. I actually overwrote it with something else, so it didn't even end up in my recycle bin. Um, so yeah, I had to kind of start again from scratch, which is a bit annoying. It slowed me down a little bit. Um, but it's fine, and there's plenty of time for me to catch up with PDF 5 as well, because uh, this weekend is going to be the design stream, so we're going to go through the game concept, um, and we're going to talk about what 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 the game is going to be we're going to kind of 
finalize what we're going to put into the game, what's going to make the game tick. Um, and then hopefully we, we will come up with some ideas. If there's any ideas where we've got multiple choices and not enough room for them all, we'll put them to Twitter during the week. Um, um, yeah, that's about it, I think. So, cool. Um, it's been really good tonight, guys. We've managed to get two versions of it. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I've been working on Dot 2 Rewind. I'm 95% happy with it. I've got a, 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 an idea to link the rewind and the freeze time together. So I'm going to um, work on that a little bit. But as I, I'm not rushing Doc. I, I'm, I'm just going to do it when, when I do it. And I, I'm, if I'm happy with it, then I'll move on to the next section. Um, but I'm, I'm very happy with the effect. I'm actually sometime maybe not next week but the week after i'm a little bit behind on my uh, dev blog as well so i'm going to um add to my dev blog uh explaining how the rewind effect works and, and maybe sharing the the techniques i use to do the the uh the kind of glitchy uh interference on the screen because uh, it, it's taken me a while to get it right and i think it's quite an interesting in topic so i'll probably do that as well um but yeah thanks guys thanks for for joining the stream tonight it's been really good um enjoyed having you again as normal it's been really helpful uh, for me as well as hopefully you guys um, as I say I'll drop this all on uh, github in a minute um, but for now let's go and raid epic ninja monkey but this time I'm gonna get his his name correct as well so please say hi to epic ninja monkey follow him if you're interested in um, yeah I haven't got a github command unfortunately I, I will link the Actually, let me link the GitHub before I start the raid, so... Do this in the right window. Let me see. Uh, oh, there you go. Colt's already linked it. Um, and you know what, I just pasted... I, I copied the raid link and then overrode it. So, uh, raid, epic, neon ninja monkey and i will see you guys on or anybody who follows the saturday stream on saturday and we'll uh, we'll get some cool work done and hopefully nail down exactly how we're gonna do um the game once and for all so thanks guys thanks for a great stream uh sleep well and i'll see you guys on saturday take care